Hoo-hoo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 77 of the Megavision Show, the companion podcast to Megavision's magazine. Today is April the 3rd, 2021, and it's the day before Easter, which is why we're recording a day earlier than usual, where we would have scripted this week, but somebody loves you, baby. So we decided to do it early. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, uh, Graham Cookson, and join me this week. Every bunny needs some bunny to love. It's my co-host, Scotty Moe. And he might not carrot at all, but we think he's irresistible. It's Martin Gulick. See you guys. <laughs> How long does it take you to come up with those? I'm just curious. And you're like oh, sitting on the toilet. Hey, bunny rat. You know, that's all good. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, we're back once again live on Twitch. So keep us company and fire off any questions you have in the chat, and we'll get to them as we go through the show. And we've got a great show for you tonight. And it's hotter than a pair of hot crust buns straight out of the oven. As always, we'll be answering some of your burning questions. We'll have our usual Sega gaming and movie banter and stuff. And we have our feature discussion where we ask whether Xbox Game Pass is the future of gaming or not. So strap in for the ride that is this week's Megavisions show. Yes, that's like a right. five. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's bad timing, Scotty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bad time to discuss. Okay. Great. Yep, brilliant. Um, so, as always, we'll be starting with how our week's been going. So, Scotty, let's start with you, buddy. How's it going? Sure, yeah. Um, I've been watching Falcon Winter Soldier, and I don't honestly know why. Have you guys been watching that? <laughs> I always saw uh, the first episode, but I, I felt like I had so many other shows that I was uh, watching that I, I kind of gravitated more towards. I did not. Okay, so yeah. I have been watching it and I was actually going to bring this up as well, but I forgot to add it to the outline. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Scotty. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I kind of know why I'm watching it because the Winter Soldier is one of my favorites of the Marvel characters out of all those movies. I loved, I love the Winter okay. Soldier movie and yeah, I think he's awesome. And I, I thought this could, this could be a really fun thing, but right now on episode three, I'm like, I don't know if I'm enjoying this or not at all. Like, now you're right, asking why. Right, right. Even yeah. even with the um okay, so you're caught up. It's it's only three eps <laughs> in. Uh no spoilers, but even with the 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 uh, we'll call it a stinger, even though it wasn't like a post credits thing or anything. Yeah. To give to save everyone thirty minutes of their life, there's no <laughs> post credits anything with the eight minutes of credits that each episode has. Oh, um yeah. No, even with the like stinger at the end of episode three, I'm just like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But I was still like, I don't think I care still. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I had to look up characters' names that have that are appearing in the show because it's been so long since any of the Captain America movies. And um and and I, I think like WandaVision was great starting out. It had mm. a really strong start because it was it was I, I know that there is a comic, uh there's a there's a saga or series that is WandaVision that it's based off of as well but that was just a, a new cool fresh thing for the marvel universe and for honestly sitcoms or whatever you'd call it yeah um, that style of show um so i think that set i don't want to say that raised the bar but that some set some sort of bar for yeah. marvel tv shows and i know this is a totally different thing but i feel like every scene of this show i've seen in something else like it is paint by numbers the action like if yeah. you would turn on I don't even, I'm trying to think of like any movie. What's the one that I just saw that was, um, was that Bruce Willis? I can't remember. No, it was Will Smith. Um, what was well, the one where he was a clone? Gemini man. Gemini man. Like there are parts of that. I was like, Oh yeah, that's just like that. That's just like that in this movie and stuff or in the, see, I just called it a movie in this series. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it just feels like an action movie. It's going like, I, I guess I'm watching cause it's another MCU thing. And I kind of like the characters, but the whole time I'm thinking like, yeah, man, Chris, Chris Evans was the reason I was watching those movies and he's dead. Oh, spoilers. Um, <laughs> if you haven't seen that, but, last the end game. Anyway. Well, that's, that's the thing too, is it, it any, uh, this is 
repetitive to anyone or redundant to it. It's like regular nerds watching us nerds here, but like no one really dies in comic books. So I know the MCU is its own thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if just like they do a flashback and it's with Chris Evans or something or whatever, like, yeah. like a new, yeah. a new flashback. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I, mm, I can't say why exactly, but I feel like the third episode was insult to injury that agent Carter got canceled when it did. Oh, I've never seen about. a single agent Carter. Uh, well, TV but show. you know, it exists. I know like, it exists. Peggy Carter was caps yeah. caps girl and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, but I don't know, like visually it's kind of cool, but like the whole time every episode happens, it's like, I just want to see Falcon flying around and like winter soldier bashing shit with his arm. I don't care about them walking around in cool leather coats. And stuff, yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's like, it's trying to be something that it shouldn't be trying to be almost it's trying to be like a sort of spy thriller movie. It almost feels like, or like, yeah, spy it's like trying to be a TV sophisticated show. action film, which is an oxymoron. So, yeah. And, and most of the action scenes haven't been that good. I think like, well, that's the problem too, is it started with an action scene. Like it started kicking people's asses and then it, it kind of ramps up here and there, but it's not. Yeah. And I just don't care about most of the cast. That's not Bucky or Sam. <laughs> yeah there's like one or two characters I'm like oh that's interesting but yeah most of them it's like yeah. and some of them they just introduce and then it's like yeah they're clearly not going to be in for the rest of like the episode or yeah anything. that's it's, yeah it's like okay when are they going to die like they have yeah. one bad line i know this character's not going to last you know yeah um i was just going to say I, I, like just a quick hot take i know uh you know referring to what you said earlier i think that's one reason why comics as a medium haven't appealed to me that much before because there are so many um versions and universes and arcs and like i'm the kind of person that likes like a story that's mm. self-contained and and like the character is going through something but i'm not going to see him in like a different universe or or, or whatever you know but, but but like i'm fine with the movies i guess because they do have an actual you know, I, I guess structured to them and there is a beginning and end, you know, and they don't have like, you know, decades of, of different variations and endings. So because I'm like, all right, well, Batman, you know, dies in this version. But over here, you know, it's Batman in the future, or, you know, or whatever, in, yeah. insert whatever comic here. So mm -hmm. but, but yeah, but I'm also like for Marvel movies right now. Anyway, I'm just getting a little like WandaVision was unique, but I feel like if, if it's if you're saying it's basically going by the way of other Marvel movies, I think I, I would get tired of it. So. I mean, it's just like, this is not, I don't think this is spoilers. Graham, if it is take this part out or something, but that like, there's a scene where uh, Bucky and Sam, uh, Sam is Falcon. Uh, spoilers. Franklin doesn't know their name, but like spoilers. they, they are on, yeah, I guess spoilers flashing on the screen, whatever they're <laughs> undercover with a bad guy. And they're in a meeting that's in the top of a club with the boss bad person and a cell phone goes off. And it's like, okay, I, I was waiting for the part where this meeting was going to go bad and it was going to have to turn into a fight scene. And that exact thing happens. It's like, there's nothing new in this show. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I think uh, honestly, deep down in the back of my head, I don't, I don't have a, of the biggest grasp on all Marvel stuff. Spider-Man's my favorite superhero, so I know stuff revolving around him hmm. and some Captain America stuff. But I know that at one point in the comics, both Bucky and Falcon become Captain America at some point. Oh, so wow. that is in the back of my head is like, when is one of these two dudes going to pick up the shield and do shit, you know? Yeah. Right. So mm. you're, just, you're just waiting for it. That, yeah, yeah. Like, and I was even waiting when they brought in. Um, oh, crap. Uh, Rhodey, who's War oh, Machine. Yeah. There, there, there was um, there was um, Iron Patriot at one point too. But that's a whole other thing. But I was like, oh, he's showing up. Are they just gonna make him Iron Patriot right now? Like, I don't. I think I feel like my background of the comics is kind of ruining the show indirectly for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that probably adds to it. I think that that extra wrinkle doesn't help. But like, I, I mean, like comic book fans i guess go to these movies because they've read these things and are fans of them so i feel like they expect it and sometimes yeah. i feel like it's like weird when they're like oh you didn't do the thing that's in the comic but i'm like well you already read it in the comic so maybe they can do something different i don't know but 
Yeah. That's the whole thing too. It's like that, that was Paul W.S.'s Anderson for his defense for the first Resident Evil movie because that game was made to be a movie. But he's like, I didn't want to just recreate that game because then if you played the game, you know everything that's going to happen in this movie before it does. Right. So where's the excitement? So, right. so you got to take like, this is a, this is a acceptance thing I came to with the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies is a like, I'm just going to treat those as someone's fan fiction because right. a, a lot of, the majority of it is horrible and B it's like making me upset. <laughs> so oh, I'm just yeah, going you, to can make, you can make it like, let's like, pre- let's preface this. You can make your own version, but it has to be like a good story and good character development and mm. a good script. You know what I mean? Like right. you can create, I, I, I am a fan of original content, but as long as you actually know how to make the movie, like mortal Kombat right. annihilation, terrible movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The first Mortal Kombat, you know, like 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 that. That was a good movie, like, you yeah. know, for the '90s and the graphics. Sure, now it looks kind of crappy, but hey, you know, like they created something that was based on, you know, a, a couple of uh, a background paragraphs on the Mortal Kombat arcade, and they made a movie out yeah. of it. You know, yeah, whole right. story. <laughs> so you know, like you can do it well if if you if you have put your mind to it and you have the right talent. But yeah, totally. Not everyone can do that. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that I think that's the thing where comic book fans might get annoyed in that um, they've read this this story arc in a comic book, for example, um, of of a movie, for example, um, and that's what the movie's about that plot. But then they deviate and change things, and that's when it gets annoying. But if they were just like, okay, we've got Batman the character, for example, we've got the Joker, they're going to do this, going to be a completely new story, but with those characters, I think that's when it's fine. That's when people yeah. can really get into it and go, oh, this is completely new and fresh. Oh my God, whoa. But if it's like, we're going to do this story arc that you read like 10 years ago, but we're going to ruin it. Yeah. <laughs> like sort of thing. It's like, oh, damn it. Um, yeah. But but I don't read comic books much. So like, I don't really read them at all anymore. But so yeah, a lot of this stuff is would be new to me anyway. But yeah, even even the Winter Sol- in the Falcon Winter Soldier, it's just kind of a bit like, I, I don't know if I'm enjoying this. Yeah. It's like... Sure. Yeah, oh, and let, let me be more nuanced also as well because I know people might be like what about the Dragon Ball movie like all right originality reaches a certain oh. point but I feel like you can't veer off completely off the thing like I feel like you should still maintain it in in the universe like like right. have some kind of thing but like you know you're not turning super sane by putting like hair gel in your hair or whatever <laughs> you know what I mean so so like there's yeah. certain things you should keep yeah and you oh, can make a different story but was it ah oh, the That's Max Payne? Did you guys see the Max Payne movie? God, no, with Mark Wahlberg. Was that yeah, him? yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't know if I've actually just confused this in my brain with something else. But I remember that movie being terrible. But there was something yeah, about like is. him fighting monsters or something in it. Is am I getting that right? Or like aliens? Uh, there might be more than one Max Payne movie. Ah, so a, I don't know. In my head, I'm sure there's like he's fighting demons or monsters in it and stuff. And I'm like, are you thinking of Constantine starring Keanu Reeves? No, I, yeah, see, that's that's what I'm worried in my head that I'm mixing the two up. But for some reason, I feel like the Mark Wahlberg movie, he was also doing something similar. And I was like, oh, dude, this has gone off the rails. But unless but it's so long for, since I watched it, I can't remember now. Maybe but, like the problem is that we've seen so many action movies, so now we're just numb to anything new. Basically, yeah. do so much. But I just remember watching that movie going, this is literally nothing like, it's like, it's so far away from the original source material. This is nothing like it. I was like, wow, this is bad. (laughs) Oh, for for a long time, I could not differentiate the parts of a movie in my head between Blade 3 and like one of the Underworld movies. Those are (laughs) are completely different styles. That was like that era, you know? (laughs) Or Queen of the Uh, Damned. I also um, feel like they all had the same vibe. Oh, wow. Anyway, right, exactly. I've never seen yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I just so, uh, so yeah. Um, anyway, we moving, get... <laughs> moving on. What the hell was I talking about? <laughs> what, what else? We were about Falcon Winter Soldier, and then we just yeah. deviated yeah. from uh, <laughs> what we hate about movies. Yeah. That's, that's kind of all I've been watching. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'll go through my quick ups. My, my oh, my quick ups, real pick. I'll go through my pickups real quick. Um, I like I, I I backed the book Itchy Tasty. The unofficial, what does it actually say? Unofficial history of Resident Evil Ooh, by um, Alex nice. Aniel. I'm probably saying that wrong. Real cool, like black inside there. Oh, yeah. so um, d- d- just wanted to quickly describe that front cover because that is awesome. I instantly knew that was Resident Evil from just looking at the cover, not even the words. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. for the audio listeners, I wasn't expecting that book. <laughs> it's it's uh, a black and white title. photo of that very famous scene from the very original Resident Evil on the Saturn and PlayStation One where. You first meet a zombie. It's like a little cutscene, and you see like the zombie turn its head to the side, 
they've got that screenshot basically but in black and white and this is yeah. itchy tasty which is that's from a diary or something isn't it um from um yeah i went into scientist. great detail i just realized now i own two things that say itchy taste them itchy tasty <laughs> on them because i'm looking at the painting that rachel did for me for christmas mm. um yeah i went into great detail explaining that but itchy tasty is one of the first journal entries or diary entries you read in the first game um and that it's it's a plot device i guess as well so that's why yeah. that phrase it's short meaningful mm-hmm. um but yeah it's in like a almost blood stylized font yeah. over the cover um uh so it, it's very good it's very well written uh the reason it's unofficial is it just doesn't have capcom's blessing but it really is um uh and i'm i'm probably saying his name wrong but aniel and it's a n i e l alex um he is also the head of limited run games japan oh very um, cool. but he can speak japanese and so these interviews are him actually talking to like shinji mikami wow. and um hideo uh oh shoot uh kamiya what's what's his uh what the hell is his first name let me find the picture of him in here hideki hideki kamiya oh yeah uh, mm-hmm for platinum games like wonderful 101 and um being an asshole on twitter and stuff uh which he's not (laughs) in real life i guess was what he was saying from uh these interviews and everything no it is very interesting i'm already learning a lot about what went into these games and i think it goes up to 2006 um but it's really really cool to hear how no joke Resident Evil basically saved Capcom because they were in a financial rut before it came out. Oh, wow. And they were like, let's just keep putting out Mega Man, keep putting out Street Fighter. I mean, not much has changed, but... Um, <laughs> That's they, true. Uh, it's been 30, 40 years almost. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's really, really interesting. It just emphasized how much I need to play the game that was the biggest inspiration for Resident Evil. It's called Sweet Home, which was on the NES. Mm. It's a RPG slash survival horror kind of game that was out on the original Nintendo or the um, Famicom, I think over there. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but no, but itchy tasty is very good. Um, My name's in it too, because I backed it. Woohoo. But I highly recommend it for any resident evil fan or maybe any survival horror fan, because arguably resident evil did. If, if it didn't start the survival horror genre, it popularized it because there was, um, Oh God, what is the other one called alone in the dark? I think mm-hmm. the problem is like there hasn't really been a good alone in the dark game, like a solid one. This one kind of or Resident Evil kind of brought it to the masses, but it goes into great detail on why the voice acting is bad. And I will actually, I, oh. I will say that here because I thought it was a very interesting tidbit. So um, everybody knows, uh, I'll give this to you, Jill, the master of unlocking oh, or you were almost a chill sandwich. You know, everybody knows those um, or I could quote the beginning thing of the game. Like don't, Stop it. Don't open that door. So apparently <laughs> there is only English uh, dialogue in the first game. Even the Japanese version oh, wow. has English dialogue. And so what they did, they had English voice actors, but very basic lines because the majority of Japan, the population knows some sort of English. It's kind of it's almost an unspoken requirement to learn English over there. Hmm. Um Erica baby. And, and I guess the British as well. <laughs> Empire <right>. stuff. <stop. laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But so like so the reason the lines are so bad, it's so that if you don't or if you're not fluent in English in Japan, you can still understand what they're saying. So that's ah. why it's very basic stuff. Like, um what uh something's wrong with this mansion. Like you wouldn't say something's wrong with this mansion, you know, you would say like what the hell is going on here or something like that, yeah. you know. So but, I, mean, but I thought that was interesting. So all those lines, like there's no, there's only uh, English audio for the first game. That does wow. sound like it's right up my alley. Um, but I mean, also even the nineties, like I think like English dubbing, even in anime and stuff in general, wasn't great either. So I feel like there, that was just like an ongoing uh, thing in the nineties. And then, you know, dubbing wasn't perfected until the two thousands. Um, mm-hmm. Hmm. But but yeah, I, I, that that does sound like it's right up my alley. When I first saw it on the on your outline, I'm like, what the hell is itchy tasty? It was like a cookbook <laughs> or something, or knitting sweaters, <laughs> knitting sweaters wow. while cooking something. Right. Um, so I'm just wow. so you know, I'm actually sharing um, a play from Sweet Home from the NES uh, oh, cool. with with the Twitch with Twitch right now. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's like a top down view sort of game, but you it then goes into like first person view things for I think for fighting and stuff. 
it's it's right. nuts. Oh yeah, good point, Red Jaguar. He says like perfected, really? <laughs> when <laughs> anime dubbing and stuff. Good good call. But yeah, no, yeah, itchy face. Yeah, I highly progress. recommend. I, I think it's only hardcover right now since it just came out. Hmm. Um, but there is a, I believe there's an ebook version of it as well, though. Uh, can't recommend it enough though. Just because it's unofficial doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it doesn't have Capcom's blessing, mm. basically. Uh, but that, but that's what's so cool is since the author speaks Japanese, he's had these interviews. It's not like you nope. know n- nothing's going to be really lost in translation. I also found out um, the because I I've thought long and hard about getting itchy tasty tattooed on myself in some way shape or form, but I've learned that it translates to something completely different. And I should have marked this, but it means something like basically uh, the horse eats or something translated very poorly. Oh. Um, <laughs> so. Maybe I'll find it later on and we'll continue with it. But um, yeah, Sweet Home. I definitely got to try that out. Um, But I'm really enjoying it. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, And then on the other side of the coin, I bought Taxi Chaos. Ooh. How did that go? played it yet. Yeah. Rachel and I played it last night. Crazy Taxi is no joke. One of her favorite video games. Uh, It's definitely one of my favorite uh, Dreamcast video games. Um, This is... For those that don't know, it's it, this is something that, like, I think didn't Sega or somebody had to come out and say, like, Sega has nothing to do with this because mm, yeah, it looks so they did. Crazy Taxi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this, if, if Crazy Taxi was a Saturday morning, like, edgy Saturday morning cartoon, this is the Nick Jr. version of that. Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's bland as hell. Oh, like, no. it controls all right. But you have a hop. You just hit the X button, or I guess it would be the A button to literally hop your car. Yeah. But it is the same general idea. You got to go around, pick up people, take them to their destination. You can literally hop on top of some buildings and stuff. Um, you have a crazy dash. It's not that called that, but it's just <laughs> hold down the shoulder button, let go of L, and you're still accelerating. It's wow, really easy. Okay. Uh, um, it is. It's it's just very stale overall. Like it doesn't have like a characteristic to it. Um, okay. It's not. Like, holy crap, we are in uh, just, like, contrasting things here. This book is great. I'm quickly reading through it. Taxi Chaos, I don't know if I'll play again. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because okay. it's so, like, we literally, the music is not great. The, the 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 levels of the actual mixing is bad because sometimes people are loud. And they're having, like, entire conversations. Like, one business dude gets in your cap and he's like, yeah, I got to make a call. All right, now buy it and then sell it. And then buy it again and sell it one more time and then buy it. That's almost verbatim because I've heard that line so many times already oh, playing God. this game for only like two hours. Um, yeah. And uh, no joke, I was like, do you think the music is really what makes Crazy Taxi? Like, we don't feel like a sense of adrenaline or, or trying to rush around with this game. So I pulled up Spotify, found a Crazy Taxi playlist, hit play. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're already having more fun playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's the music um, that does it. Yeah, but totally. like, it's... It's not good. It's like 30 bucks. So if you're curious, if you're curious, maybe get it used so you can return it quick enough. Don't download it because then oh, you wow. can't get your refund. Unless yeah, I'm not $30 curious. Yeah, no. Um, I honestly bought this because I wanted to, no one on the site had reviewed this yet. And I was like, this, it feels like we should talk about this game on Mega Visions because we mm-hmm. like Sega a lot. It's like mm-hmm. Crazy Taxi. And and I said to Rachel, I'm like, should I tell the guy, should I just like volunteer to review this? Because I've reviewed games I've been excited for in the past and it just makes them bad. And it's a, that's kind of something you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, um, you don't want to like, I, well, Martin, you're a huge fan of Shenmue. You yeah. volunteered to review Shenmue 3, but you actually enjoyed it, though, didn't you? Like, I did enjoy it. I, I mean, it. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, it, it was uh, it was a 15 year long wait. Obviously, I have issues with it. But, you know, overall, I thought I thought it was great to see it again. Uh, the, right. the game. Um, but yeah, it, it, Taxi Chaos doesn't sound like it's in that uh, mm. thing. So no, yeah, it sad. is. It's not good. And so I'm like. I don't think I want to tell the Mega Visions people that I want to review this game because I don't know if I could play it <laughs> as in depth as I need to to mm. review this yeah, game. I enjoyed playing Shenmue 3. I think Taxi Chaos sounds like an exercise for you if you had to play it. You know, there's one mode that it's called free free form free form free flow. I don't know. You can just drive around. There's no timer, but you can still okay. pick up customers, which is cool. I wish that any crazy taxi game had that. Yeah. There's another mode called pro mode where you still pick people up. You have a timer, you have the main timer, 
but it there's no top arrow to show you where to go. Oh, you just right. have to know where the locations are. Okay. And like that's kind of cool, but no part of the city looks different from another part of the city. Uh, <laughs> so you have no idea where you are. In oh, it. God. Um, so like, like in I, Crazy Taxi, for example, you once you know the map and know the route and stuff, and it goes go to Pizza Hut, you kind of already know where it is. Even though the arrow is pointing one way, you can sometimes take a shortcut or, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, that's annoying. That's frustrating. It's not yeah. good. I, I, we were bummed, and the people that you play as kind of suck. Um, cause the one lady said the word hashtag when she was talking about stuff and I'm like, I act, oh God damn. I uploaded a clip. If you want to go to my Twitter real quick and share it, you can Graham. Actually, that might be kind of funny. Okay. Um, it's my last week that I did, but I, we were sharing stuff cause we were curious like, oh, in crazy taxi, you literally can pick up customers in the water. If you guys remember, mm. um, like underwater in the pier or whatever for, I don't know why. Um, so we're like, let's just hop in the water and you, you die. You, I mean, you respawn oh, or wow. whatever. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you, you respawn, but I, um, that's real. I shared a video when Rachel was playing, and it it gives a good impression of the game because of how goofy it looks when you fall off the level. But also, your taxi cab driver is saying how she's an influencer and stuff, and I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> oh I can't God, play this. Drown game this longer. taxi right now. Yeah, it's I can't do this. <laughs> um, well, and the, you have to like. There are only two drivers. You have to unlock other cars. I don't even know if there are other drivers. Oh, this is the... I, I understand where they were going with this, but it's such a bad, badly executed thing. Like, you can find items in the city as you're driving, and so it'll be like a teacher is late for her class, and she forgot her notebook. So they're like, if you can find my notebook, that would really help me out. And I was looking at the trophies, and there's like complete Professor so and so storyline. I'm like... Did you seriously try to put a fetch quest aspect into your crazy taxi clone? That oh, wow. there's no way I'm going to be driving slow enough to be like, there's that notebook I need, you know, veer off to the yeah. right. Like <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, so the, what, what, how is it taxi chaos? If then you have to be cold and calculated to find a book, you know what I yeah, mean? Like, it did not make sense to me. Okay, um, I, I've actually just Graham, got the video. I've got it? the video. Um, I don't know if my audio is going to share actually with this. You don't need the audio. Okay. So cool. You just got to see that. That okay. Fly, right. But, um, yeah. I'm going to. Tr- okay. I'm going to share it live with people now. Well, Enjoy, everybody. Um, my camera might be blocking what she says, but it doesn't matter. It's just. Oh, such it a- is actually. It's all right. That's okay. There you go. Good stuff, people. It, it doesn't even like have like a. It doesn't even like when it lands in the water. It just like just disappears like a crappy yeah. polygon. Like it, it's not even smooth. Yeah. Look at that. That's oh my god, yeah. The, the, reason, the reason that I saved that clip was because normally oh it just loads you back onto the road. This one, no. For some reason, it thought to drop you from 30 feet in the sky. That's normally, nuts. it respawns you on the ground. It just wow. looks like a shitty clipping like bug or something. It's like, not a good game. Go in the water. It's, it's not yeah. a bad game. Like It's playable, but the more we played it... I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I just want to play Crazy Taxi now. I just want to play the better version of this because mm. I know it exists. So... Wow. I probably spent more. I just spent more time talking about it than it would to fucking write this review. So there we go. <laughs> there you go. You can just you can just you know clip the audio and then you know upload that. Have someone transcribe it and there you go. Yeah, do that. Get on that Google. <laughs> That'd be a nice rant. Oh mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, that's uh, uh, so. Well, that's, that's a little bit week, disappointing because I was actually quite interested in that game, but yeah, clearly it's, it's not. not the one for me. Like if it <laughs> drops to like fifteen bucks, I'd say grab it. Mm-hmm. Um. It, it launched at thirty dollars, so that says something right there. Wow! So you shouldn't judge a game like that because holy shit, Deadly Premonition came out at twenty dollars, and that is like a monster in itself that's good and bad all over. Well, I got bad vibes from the box art because it looked like something out of like a Happy Meal or a cereal oh. box, you know. <laughs> so like, I was I like, mm, that doesn't this. sound good. I don't think this is going to show up at all. But you can see how bad that lady. Uh, no, it's going to be so blurry. I'm sorry, but like her fingers, like. Her index fingers are disconnected from her hand, but it's clear that like her hands are like one solid shape. I can't. I'm having trouble just doing that <laughs> as a human. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh. Is she doing the shocker? <laughs> like, box Almost. Wow. Uh, this is what happens when we do a podcast on Saturday. I just get angry about. Yes. Jeez. Uh, so, uh, Marcin. How's it going with yes. you? Yes, <laughs> I'll try and make it. I'll make it brief. Um, I was trying so. to make it brief. Sorry, Chris. 
No, it's okay. I, I feel like I, I just have a lot of things that I, I watched and played this mm-hmm. week. So I finished Yakuza 3, and I will mm-hmm. admit, uh, Scotty, that I don't think it was as good as uh, obviously Kiwami 2, and it was definitely a big drop um, going into it because, you know, it's just a remaster for a PS3 game. But yeah, Yakuza 4, I'm enjoying much more. I think, you know, just because they introduced the new characters and you're pay- playing from different perspectives. Um, uh, in my day job, if for those of you that don't know, I work at a legal aid organization. So, uh, some coworkers who, are, funny enough, it's like a group of twelve people in the organization. But in my team, they're both like gaming nerds and, and tabletop nerds, which is fun. Um, so we started playing Valheim uh, once a week, and that is really fun. That that's an actual legit survival, um, MMO, so to speak. So, I, like, we've just been going in once a week trying to just discover it ourselves and you know not read up on it on the internet and just kind of figuring it out and it's been pretty enjoyable the, the viking one right yep yeah Ooh, nice uh it's, it's, i keep i kept seeing that i kept seeing gameplay on it and i thought it was the newest assassin's creed game oh. but that's not an insult <laughs> that, that shows how good it looks well, okay yeah. yeah, I mean, like, like I enjoyed it. You know, it's got the vibe of Minecraft and stuff. You know, you can be building and terraforming, you know, houses and whatnot. There's, there's some crazy stuff like people have been already doing. Someone created like an AT-AT from Star Wars. Like, I don't know how people do it, but yeah, people have some that talent. And like, like days to start, you know how there's seconds to create in a video game? Yeah, there has to be like days to star wars in a crafting game how long did it take someone to make something from star wars in this game <laughs> i already made a death star nice it's like been out a week um but yeah so those are the main two games that i played in terms of uh uh video and episodes and you know tv shows and stuff i finished season one of doom patrol uh and uh i've also watched godzilla versus kong this week oh, nice. on eight both on hbo max uh doom patrol is is definitely when it comes to superheroes it's more in the vein of uh what is that fx series that's like based off of x-men um i forgot what it was called uh but but it's kind of similar in that where it's like super uh outlandish in, in a sense like like it's very character driven but there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of uh, outlandish stuff that happens. Very, very uh, psychedelic and you know weird, <laughs> but 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 it's really good. I think it's uh, very character driven. So if people were looking for tons of action, you're not going to really. Uh, I, I, it's not going to be an Avengers movie. Let's say. Oh, that. is that Legion? No. Uh, yeah, I think I think oh, so. It? Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Um, because the, the yeah, if that's the X Men based on in that universe yeah um and then i saw godzilla versus kong i'm not going to say anything because neither of you have watched it yet and i know graham wants to watch it but i, I it. really I did enjoy it. Dug it okay yeah. yeah king of monsters was really good the, the that that one i didn't understand why why people you know gave it bad reviews last yeah. go around um because i thought it was great like you're what do you want from a monster movie exactly like i think if it, if the focus is godzilla i don't you can have some character development but you know hmm. you can only do so much i feel like yeah um and yeah in terms of pickups i got the code vaccine guys and you know that's my <laughs> only pickup uh <laughs> how's that for you is is it well, better than taxi chaos it's better than Taxi Chaos. It feels better because I actually didn't feel any side effects. Uh, I thought it might have—I might have had a stomach ache, but I think it was just the buffalo wings that I had. Uh, <laughs> they were handing out and giving vaccines to people. Yeah, and I will officially say, getting a COVID vaccine, at least in my area, is easier than finding a PlayStation Five because oh, I still no, can't nice. find a PlayStation Five. Nice. But I got the COVID vaccine, so I'm still looking. Mm-hmm. If, any, if anyone knows a place where I can get a PS Five. You will trade your next COVID vaccine. I will trade my second (laughs) dose for a PS5. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I think that's that's the same in the UK. Oh, sorry, Scotty. I was uh, was talking over you. Sorry. I was just going to say, I'm sure there is a Facebook marketplace auction for trading in their vaccines or something (laughs) horrible. (laughs) There probably is. Hey, why Uh, not? There's there's a market for everything. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's it for me. That's the same over here, though. With um, I I I think I can now get uh, if i can i can like or arrange to get a covid vaccine now basically still cannot get an xbox or a ps5 over here 
Like it's <laughs> oh boy. Like a, a couple of people Damn at work have managed to get it though. Uh, yeah. Like they've managed to get PS5s at work, a couple of people. Like oh. but they're like they've got like YouTube videos and Twitter feeds open, which are like all like these people who like monitor the stocks of like various websites. Yeah. And I'm as soon as the stock thing. comes in, it's like the an alarm goes off. And so they have to have like YouTube and everything open all day. And then one of them actually like ducked out of work out of a meeting early. He went, I've got to go. Bye. <laughs> they can go, and, they can go and buy a stick. PlayStation 5. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, sir. Um, but, that's like one of the reasons I stopped going to PAX to the Penny Arcade Expo, because that's what it was like trying to get the three day passes is mm-hmm. like we had literally a group chat of people on their website that was constantly crashing. One dude was watching eBay, like horrible, just horrible. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts. Oh dear. Um, cool. Um, so for me, I'm actually going to transition to this window here. Cause I haven't really done much other than watching, um, you know, uh, talking with soldier but i am now currently sharing my screen which is the latest pickup i've got so i was going to chat about this for briefly balan wonderworld oh, oh. i'm about to say balan wonderland it's balan wonderworld balan wonderworld um and scotty's holding up his there as well yeah i've got the xbox version wrap. scotty's got the playstation 4 um i don't have one uh, oh, shit. mine's still on the shrink wrap and listen to this that's great mm. the that disc is like moving disc, that's too small i think i got a bonus um, so my, anyway, one, you got my, my, my one came with like a little, uh, I don't know if you can see that. What is that? Oh, like a, cool a little ticket type thing called like, like the Bat- Battle and Wonder World. It's like a retro looking circus style ticket. Um, that should have been yeah. the cover of the game. That looks way cooler. Yeah, it does actually. It's really awesome. Um, it's and then like, on the back, it's, the got, choices. it's got a little yeah, signature from right. Balan. Sorry. Oh, that's crazy. Hold it up for a second and I'll describe it. Um, okay. So for those that aren't sure, or for those that are listening, it looks like like the uh, explosion kind of announcement of a circus ad where it's got lines coming out of the middle and it is an old timey kind of ticket with a stamp on it and the date and everything. And Balan's like, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So that looks really cool. Yeah. Old timey circus poster. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I think, I think it's a really cool little thing, but yeah, it doesn't really do anything. It's just like a, tiny little thing but kind of nice nice little touch to have in there so but i guess that wouldn't rattle around would it it's like a tiny piece of paper um, so it must be a disc. smaller because this doesn't sound like the disc hmm. tune in next week yeah mine's like a very thin <laughs> piece of paper though so i can't even imagine that looking a rattly so anyway um <laughs> yeah so i've been pla- i played that yesterday i streamed it live for a few hours and yeah um I am torn on this. So I, unlike a lot of people, I didn't mind the demo. I actually kind of got some enjoyment out of the demo. And playing this game, I was still having moments of fun in it. But there's something about it. It feels like it's missing something. Like, the gameplay is vague. It's actually pretty... It's like, well, the gameplay is kind of solid. It's like, you know, the platforming and stuff's fine. The controls are fine. Um, The different costumes are kind of cool, some of them. Like... um, uh, the visuals are really solid. The music's really, really catchy. I think some people might hate it. I kind of love it, um, but it feels like there's something missing from it at the moment, and I don't, I can't put my finger on it. But the thing is, I'm going to keep playing it because. Um, so after my stream, at the end of my stream uh, yesterday or this morning, in fact, it's like three a.m. when I stopped playing. Um, I raided someone who else who was also playing. It. I didn't know who they were. I just sort of saw that they were playing it, and they're called Seven Night Lights. And um, she, yeah. so, so she was um, she was playing the game, and she was really far into the game compared to me. I was like literally starting. I did the first three worlds basically. She was like fed was on world twelve or something. So she had like basically all the costumes, but she was going back and doing other worlds. And and the, what she was doing, the way she was talking about the game, really made me want to play it again because. Um, it looks really awesome when you start to unlock all the other costumes and stuff and you get all the other abilities. It seems to actually really open up the game because she was like going back to one of the levels that I sort of saw and she was accessing whole new areas and stuff. She had these different abilities, like she could do triple dumps through the air and stuff and she could like run across water and fire and things like that. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like I was really What's, getting into uh, it. Do you know her name? So we can just, for those that are li- that are watching us live right now, we can link it so that they can go check her out sometime. Um, well, okay. So uh, I'll drop in the chat. So this is the yeah. uh, screen name, basically. Seven, seven Night Lights, um, all okay. one word. Um, but yeah, she was, um, 
yeah, she was she was having a lot of fun, and you could hear in her voice that she was just really enjoying herself. She was just chatting, she was really friendly, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, but yeah, she got she got like some, some really good bits. Uh, I'm going to skip forward in my video a little bit, actually. Um, oh yeah, this is not the up as her screen name. Is it not? Ew, interesting. Uh, oh, well, we'll take this part out. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, are you sure? It's something? actually eight night lights. Hold on a second. Oh, seven uh, night light. No, no S on the end. Try that. Okay. Sorry, Roger that. That's Wouldn't okay. it pop up like the sure. closest related username though? If you're looking uh, it up, which isn't that smart, I guess. Well, I'm actually I'm so. on her on my laptop. I can I'm on her channel yep. right now. It's yeah, there. so I'm going to share that for uh, everybody watching right cool. now, awesome. so that they can go check it out too. Um, so yeah, th this game is by no means perfect, not or I'd say it's not as good. Don't, if you're expecting knights, don't expect knights. It's nothing like knights. It's oh, nothing like Sonic. Um, the closest two games I can compare it to, it's almost like a merge for me, are Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg and uh, Space Station Silicon Valley. Um, in the way that some like you need to use the costumes to like. Um, at gain access to new areas, or even a tiny bit of a hint of Banjo Kazooie. If you remember, like you used to get you used to morph into different animals and stuff, and then you could reach different areas. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of got that aspect to it. So, and the whole idea is like later on when you unlock more costumes, you can go back and use those costumes on earlier levels, which gives you access to new areas and stuff. Like this whole areas that are completely locked off to you um, that you need to have other costumes to get to. Um, yeah, and then and there's also like this. I, I don't know if you've, you've like how much of the demo did you guys play? Um, I finished it. Okay, I didn't touch it. <laughs> I passed did, battle. It took two hits. Did you ever do like a little football? So I think I found it on my screen. The yes. soccer thing. I did not find yes. that in the demo totally at all. That. I was watching you when you played that. I was like, Graham, did you play this game? Soccer is your livelihood, isn't it? Over there, I thought you would remember this. <laughs> I'm sorry, football. Football. Football, sir. Yeah, no, this is like a little know. mini bonus game where you get to kick a football soccer ball for you Americans at like this target thing. Um, for you Americans. <laughs> you, everywhere in the world, so the world calls it football. <laughs> so, That's true. That's true. And then football, I'm sorry, Siren. Football, you, you, you don't really kick it. You just kick it once, then you fucking throw it across with your hand, you know? So why even call it football? I don't know. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> this is like a Seinfeld rant. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, um, but then you got like a baseball game in this as well. And I think there's a golf one. Like I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, oh, and Scotty, you picked up on this in the very first level. There's no morphing anymore. In this second level, there God. is like there's like this. Um, yeah. When I say second level, it's like the second door of the first world, basically. But yeah, there's like the, the weird morphing to the level again. Um, and it's funny because as soon as you said you found it made you like sort of nauseous when you were playing the demo, I was like playing this bit. I was like, okay, now I'm finding this nauseous because just because I think you Sorry. mentioned it, <laughs> I was just like, oh, no. but that no, is all fine. Um, sense. But yeah, I'm, not I'm the only one though. Uh, I, yeah. I I recently joined a Knights related Discord and everybody's been saying high praise about this uh, game. I think hmm. which is fine, um, but the like. Someone else in there mentioned it. I was listening to uh, Giant Bomb talk about it, and Jeff Gersman even said that he was feeling he wasn't nauseous, but he was. It didn't feel like a hundred percent. Like it, it wasn't making him queasy, but there was just mm. something off that was kind of messing with his his. I don't know if it's that maybe it's the lack of horizon because you know how like if you don't have a horizon, you get nauseous. Yeah. Um, but so it's like. Yeah, looking at it makes me feel a little nauseous right now. Okay, really, so he, I think that also <laughs> might be something. With maybe older people i don't know compared to younger people playing that don't notice it uh but the um i don't know if this will make more sense to you graham but i was i'm trying not to read reviews about this or listen to too many people's opinions because there is so much negativity around it and unfortunately right. I, that'll that will sponge off onto me um mm. or i'll sponge I'll absorb that i feel but one thing I had to listen to giant bomb because there was a whole, like their podcast was split up and there was like a ho solid, almost half hour segment of them talking about this game. I'm like, I have to hear what they have to say about this. Okay. I think Jeff Gersman, people know that he is like overly negative and not just overly critical about stuff, but like he openly hates this game, but he can't stop playing it. Oh, wow. And he doesn't understand <laughs> why it sounds like, uh... like, like he, he basically said, this feels and looks like, 
a, a game that should have come out on the PS2 or was going to come out on the mm. PS2, but then at the last second, there should have been someone to step in and be like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if we should put this out. Like, right, and, they re- remastered, like and then they remastered it. You know? So yeah. so that's funny you say that, because I can't remember who was. Someone in the chat jumped on last night while I was playing, and they were saying, this looks like it should have been a PS2 era game, basically. Um, but that's not to say it's bad looking. You know? Oh no, it's not bad looking, yeah, it's but pretty. there's something about it that does feel very much reminiscent of PS2 GameCube style games, um, but just with better visuals. And yeah, I this, this oh, thing, the thing that's on the right. screen right now, the Balan bits, were just not fun. That was such I, a fucking tease. Yeah, so disappointing. Oh, Red Jaguar 5 said that was them, they said. Ah, Red Jaguar, Red yes, thank you. Right yes, on. it was you. Yeah, like, sorry, I couldn't remember uh, who, um, yeah, who said that, but... Yeah, and you're not wrong. The, I think you're right. I just I love the character design. Like the villain in this looks so much cooler than Balan. I wish that there was a statue of that weird, <laughs> not Riala character, um, tentacle person. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but there's so there's so much weirdness in this game as well. Like, oh, if I if I go let's try and skip forward to like a boss or something. Oh, no, there, uh, I guess there was also an actual novelization released, and oh, it really? might this is bad this is bad game design but it might actually help you understand bits of the game more or the impression of the like have more depth to it by reading that thing from what i understand i'm like that's horrible you shouldn't release a comp no. uh, a complimentary is that the a company it's also star wars baby <laughs> a companion <laughs> yeah to, to get more depth in and understand more yeah i feel like that that is bad uh design um but yeah i don't know the, just looking at it just makes me feel a little a little nauseous and the, there were there were two games when i was younger so this isn't only when i was old, older that that made me feel the same way the original spyro made me feel that way oh really and there was there was a rugrats game that came out on ps1 and i don't know if it was the graphics or the camera but both of them legit made me uh have to get up and go to the bathroom because I thought it was going to throw up. And I don't know oh, why. Wow. I don't know what the reason is. If it's the color scheme or it was the camera or what, but it's giving me the same vibes right now. Uh, so, I don't I like don't that over-sexualized fish that you're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I, so th- there's a couple of things that I really shouldn't i feel like shouldn't be happening in games these days and one is this game actually jerks quite a lot you suddenly get frame skips um and i i I think some people maybe on twitch thought that like the twitch was lagging at times so it wasn't it's actually the live game was randomly just sort of twitching like suddenly you just miss a couple of frames which is just really annoying and really like frustrating um and what's the other thing there was one other thing that reminded that made me think of it and i can't think what it is now Never i've mind. heard you shouldn't even bother getting the switch version because it run, runs like crap on there oh uh, okay so just i was wondering how for people. yeah but it's it's interesting how, it's, how are, the important question how are your tims doing oh they're doing quite well I, so how are your walmart brand peeps doing <laughs> <laughs> they've um, like I, again i didn't realize this i don't know if this was in a demo or not but they you've got this tim's tower thing that the more tims you kind of unlock or breed or feed or something i don't know i don't entirely know what i'm doing you just get your gems in the level and then you feed it to the little tims and, and there's this little counter box. thing sure, sure. and sure. like this tower builds itself when you reach certain checkpoints and like towers building so that's kind of cool uh <laughs> from what i heard you can feed so tims are like amorphous blob things that look like the Easter candy peeps. Um, See, I legitimately thought you were talking about like Timberlands, like those boots, Tim's. Oh, people keep calling him <laughs> Tim's. Boots are calling you around. <laughs> they call you around at the level for no reason. Like, uh, um, oh, they, they, so it's not, it's not just for no reason. Oh, go they, ahead. If, when you're going around the levels, they will actually bring stuff to you and they will attack enemies for you as well. If, if you can't. Oh, it's really good. Like, there's a couple of enemies who, the one of the levels, have kind of got a shielded front. And for some reason, I, did, I didn't have an ability at the time that could really fight them. Because um, they were like, oh, okay. immediately look at you and go after you. But the Tim started attacking it and killed it. And then, like, occasionally they'll bring, like, little eggs to you or little gems and stuff. Like, if you go close enough to a gem that's out of reach, they will go and fly and get it and come back to you with it. It's kind of cool. It's like, oh, thanks, buddy. Got me a little, little I'm thing. I'm picturing sentient hiking boots right now attacking <laughs> me and bringing me jewels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, my so i so here's here's my take on it i don't think this is a great game but i'm enjoying it enough that i'm going to keep playing it and from what i've seen it does seem to get better and better which i don't know if you can say that's a great praise for a game because if you if you've got to really get into a game to enjoy it 
that's not very good. But um, uh, yeah. I'm enjoying it enough that I will happily play it a bit longer. Sorry. Um, so what was that? Uh, I said, oh, just like Final Fantasy 13 and it's 20 hour tutorial. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why I've never played that game, to be honest, because I I find most Final Fantasies like the beginnings slow and boring. And I was like, well, I'm not going to play that if it's literally for everything I said. It's, it's like four or five hours, isn't it? The opening thing. Ugh. Nothing bad. Yeah. Nothing man but yeah um so yeah that's i guess that's kind of me really um i'm gonna stop this transition so very, yeah very i'm gonna keep playing this i think the next couple of fridays i'm gonna play it a bit more and see how far i get um but yeah hmm check it out <laughs> maybe or don't i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> at your discretion i can nice. only almost recommend this game yes yeah it's there's something there. It's a half I, thumbs up. It's like, uh, maybe. I, I, I feel like this is a game that some people get a lot of joy from and other people just think it's just terrible. Cause it's, it's it like is Shenmue three or Shenmue. Yeah. Shenmue. Kind of. It's very you know? simplistic as well. Like it's very easy to play. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Actually, this kind of, uh, brings it all, brings it all back is I was going to say, we were talking about the MCU and these comic book based shows and movies that it's never going to live up to expectations mm. of comic book fans. I told everyone before Shenmue 3 came out, I'm like, it's not going to be as good as anyone wants it to, because that is at a oh. different level in our heads what we want that For game to be. For sure, 100%. Yeah. It, then you, you also have so many expectations you built up in your head for 15 years. Like you were, your yeah. ideas were festering. You've had conversations on forums. Everyone's, yeah. you know, creating their own world in their head. And, you know, it's not going to be the same when it gets so released. I, I, Exactly. So I feel like this whole game is a giant victim of circumstance because they're like Yuji Naka has teamed up with Square Enix and then they show this game and it's like, holy crap, this looks like Knights where Knights is another divisive game. But all of that combined to this is why it's going to seem worse than it actually is Mm. or more average than it actually is, I think. Right. In people's eyes. I definitely think it's a factor. I mean, but I, I don't think people were wrong when it comes to like the actual gameplay and stuff, you know, at, at least yeah. based from the videos and stuff. And sometimes, you know, the creators, you know, have some, you know, things that they they help, you know, build like Sonic and whatnot. And sometimes you just don't have the uh, creative juices anymore. I don't know. Maybe, maybe sometimes people just aren't like that. Like for Legend of Zelda, I don't know. The guy has been ma- helping make them for so many years and he still keeps innovating and, and gets well reviewed scores. So I don't think it's a matter of like, you know, old game designers who think they're still doing good, but yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it's interesting to, to hmm. ponder. Is this Yuji Naka's death stranding? Ooh, <laughs> uh, I like death stranding actually. Uh, oh no, I did like well, death stranding. I wasn't saying it was bad, but I mean, that is, that is letting the creator oh. go off the rails. Oh, you know? oh yeah. 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 Well, well, I mean, it, it, well, death stranding though, is like, I feel like <laughs> it, it has the vibe of metal gear, I guess with like the crazy character names and whatnot. And that's where it stops. Cause obviously the gameplay is different from metal gear solid. Um, and this, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, you could you could say that for sure in terms of like, all right, we're gonna let you have at it, whatever you want to do creatively. Here you go. I don't know how much money they gave the guy, um, but I feel bad if they gave him a shit ton of money. Chance or something. Yeah, here's a blank check, <laughs> and then you see the sales numbers. I'm like, oh my god. Oh gosh. Uh, I think they sold like two thousand copies or something like that in Japan. Yeah, in its first week. Wait, that Death Stranding good, or Shenmue? But... Oh, no, no. Uh, Ballon and Wonderworld. Oh, Ballon. Oh, sorry. I, I, I've, I've just lost. I, I completely lost track of the yeah, I know. I know. We should have been better at, at uh, telling the crowd what wow, we're talking okay. about. Wow, okay. But yeah, yeah that, that's not great. Uh, I mean, Death Stranding actually sold pretty well, I think, primarily based on hype and all of that. But I think mm. it's a good game as well. But it's definitely one of those games where not everyone's going to like it because it does have a lot of introspection and you know you you got to take in the environment you know when you're carrying those packages and whatnot it's not going to be for everybody for sure um i don't know what the price tag was for creating that game so maybe it wasn't worth it you know sales wise because maybe they were expecting much more but it did Mm. well enough um yeah and 
But that, that that the shitty part is like I just wish Hideo Kojima still kept going with the Silent Hills thing. Like that that's the thing that pissed me off the most is that they had something so promising yeah. that I wish they would have given a blank check for that and then mm. kept rolling with it. But yeah, that's the end of my rant. Say that. <laughs> cool. Okay, so with that, I think uh, that does it for our, our weeks then, basically. So. Do we got? Do we want to have a break, or do we go straight into our feature topic? Actually, do we, we don't have any feedback this week, do we? We nah, no. Okay, we've got no feedback. So, do we want to go have a break or go straight into our feature topic? What are you thinking? I was just going to grab a coffee real quick. We could do whichever. Okay, no, we just... can have. We'll have a. We'll have a very quick break. Uh, if anyone's got any, oh, so we're going to have our main feature topic, which is, um, I've actually forgot what we called it now. Uh, is is blah, blah, blah. is Game Pass the best or worst thing for the future of digital video games um so yeah we're looking at xbox game pass and uh, similar services like that so if anyone in the chat has any questions for us or feedback or anything just drop it in the chat and we'll get back to it um when we get back from our break or while we're going through the next bit but for now we will have a um quick break um so yeah we'll be right back in a couple of minutes so see you in a bit So I had to do a transition there. Hey, hey, everybody, we are back. Yes, <laughs> sorry, that was fun. Um, well, we're transition to timing. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I'm doing OBS in a slightly different way today, and then I have to actually click an extra button to transition across. But yeah, um, so yeah, we are moving on to our feature topic right now, which is, is Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass, the best or worst thing for the future of digital video games? So this actually comes from the news, off the back of the news that... Um, MLB, the show, 21, is not only coming to Xbox for the very first time, but it's actually going to launch on Game Pass. And so if you don't know, MLB, the show, is a baseball game, Major League Baseball, the show, um, is it's, it's a game franchise which is developed by one of Sony's internal studios and is published by Sony. So it's a Sony-owned a Sony owned and made game, and Scotty is holding up some sort of baseball bat there, by the looks of it. Yeah. A very pink... A baseball bat uh, uh it says batitude okay is that <laughs> some merch from mlb games yeah or? sure yeah i got it in every mlb that's <laughs> note. I, just, I needed it for an unboxing it's one, in so. the packaging <laughs> wow okay <laughs> um so yeah the mlb the show franchise is a sony owned and made game so it's a massive shock to everyone when they suddenly announced that it's actually going to be um on xbox as well so yeah yes, it's coming to uh, it's coming to xbox um can i hop in real quick mm-hmm, go for it preface this real quick with uh my gamestop times uh when i worked oh, at gamestop go please xbox never had like a mlb game for people to go to um they every anybody would come in and be like looking for a baseball game be like you got a ps3 or four because there's mlb the show a lot yep. more physics based, I guess. There used to be something on the micro on the Xboxes. I don't remember what the game was, but like at the time, the only thing we could tell people about was RBI Baseball, which is a bad baseball game on the Xbox. So, Never heard of that one. Um, so that Sony's kind of had why. that market. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that emphasis. I think. To why I think crazy. that's the other thing that that comes into question. Not only digital games, but uh, the exclusivity feature um, mm. when it comes to game releases uh you know even like like uh, exclusive you know developers like bungie who used to work for xbox made destiny for playstation as well you know mm-hmm. um but which is interesting i think in terms of digital gaming i think that is just an inevitable direction uh that we're already in frankly um and we're heading towards uh almost complete uh digitization uh for 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 gaming and especially uh streaming specifically uh we already see this in movie streaming we see this with every major uh movie studio and in turn people who run uh television studios create their own streaming services you know peacock (laughs) hbo max uh paramount plus Disney plus, you know, something's plus, everything's a plus and a minus. Uh, mm. And yeah, I, I think, I think that's just the way that it's, that it's heading. I know we'll probably be 
gripping our, our physical copies, you know, and we'll be telling them to take it from our cold, dead hands. But uh, in terms of gaming specifically, I think it will, uh, it, for in, in, in terms of a mass market, I think digital games is going to be where where it's heading. I think there will always be a market for physical games, you know, like vinyl came, went, died, cassettes came out, CDs came out, and then vinyl came back because it's cool and hip and people are buying vinyl again. Mm. So, so I think there will always be a market for, for that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, just to preface this whole conversation, I think it's, it's definitely heading in that direction where it's all streaming uh, and digital. So mm. I don't know what you, your guys' thoughts are. Uh, That's I want to correct myself real quick. There was the MLB 2K series. The last one was MLB 2K 13. There you go. Nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Scotty, what are your thoughts on, on all this stuff? Um, I do think it's crazy that it's, well, th- this, didn't they announce that, th- they announced that the show was going to come out on Xbox. Mm. Um, but what's crazier is that it is going to be out on Game Pass because Game Pass mm. means people can have it for free. So yeah. not only is it what, not only is it a formerly Sony exclusive game, but <coughs> excuse me, but it's a brand new game coming out yeah, day one right. for free. Now, I are we getting into our thoughts on Game Pass yet, or just this still, just the MLB um, thing, right? I mean, we could just oh, talk about this briefly, I guess. Like, yeah, go, go yeah. Uh, it. Th- I think this is- we let, let me just say, let, pad this real quick as a Red Jaguar was saying. It's totally possible that Microsoft made a deal with Sony, trade for another game, Bethesda, or something like that. So that's a that's a hypothetical. I don't know if that's actually something that is you know behind the scenes that's happening, but I think it's an interesting theory. Hmm. It's a possibility. I mean, we won't know until because um, what well, um, Sony's strange because they never really had a mascot because. And by that, I mean, like, at one point, Laura Croft was sort of their mascot, which didn't make really? sense because Jim Ritter was all their stuff. Crash Bandicoot, I, mean, I would say, also. Yeah, Crash hmm. was probably their kind of... Uh, a more, uh, what, oh, Furry God, what, mascot. Yeah, what's the phrase? <laughs> I can't remember now. Uh, anthropomorphic. Furry mania? There you go, uh, yeah. Yep, no, you got it. That was it. Uh, <laughs> Crash was their f- furry mania for a while. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, um, and then Kratos. Uh, so... It's it's just weird because Sony doesn't really have a character's face, and sometimes it does, and I don't know. I never really mm. felt like like they always had that crew, and which was also in those commercials uh, that confused the hell out of people. Like when the Dreamcast was launching, people were legitimately confused about these commercials with like uh, football and basketball stars hanging out with Sonic and Rayman. Like, is this some <laughs> cool party game I can play? I don't get what's going on. You know, I got uh, it now. It's like eight. Yeah, well, that's, but I mean, we were more aware of that <laughs> stuff, but, um, but it's a big deal, especially with an annual sports franchise, mm. that this is not only leaving exclusivity, but going to be free. That means they have a lot of confidence in the service it's going to be on to the point that if people like this enough, well, who's to say it might be horribly littered with microtransactions, mm. or it might be like the, I'm getting I'm going to get really cynical, but it might not even be a full game or something horrible. Like it'll be like you can play one season or you can play like eight innings. You want to play the ninth inning? Give us a dollar. You know, something horrible. Um, God, I don't. Uh, and that's the extent of my baseball knowledge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you do. Everything's got its own service now that uh, yeah i, I mean that, that's the that's it yeah i i absolutely agree with you scotty i mean that that's the other thing we have to take into we have to take into consideration is their game it's it, it every game almost every game is games as a service it's all every product that comes out is almost a living breathing thing there's always updates there's always downloadable content that gets released it, 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 there aren't that many games that just come out and then it's one and done. You know, if there's an issue or a problem, you can get an update for it. You know, fighting games specifically, they mm-hmm. have seasons for them, right? They have they, they have seasons. Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, all of them are like, all right, you know, season two or three, here's new characters that you can purchase or download. Here's a pass. Mortal Kombat did the same thing with, with their character rosters. Um, you know, it, like you, you see it in every facet of the gaming industry and, you know, uh, in in terms of you know games as a service, and then again movies and TV, 
uh, live streaming, uh, on demand service, all that stuff. It, 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 that's just, it's just where it's going, you know? Um, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think, I think the, the big, the big major surprise here, like just on the MLB stuff is the fact that it's not just, for example, with Yakuza games, that was a third party developer who happened to be making exclusive games for the PlayStation and making the Yakuza series was a basically exclusive. It was never like officially signed in blood or anything. But the games were notoriously. We're going to release this on PlayStation. Spit really on it. Care yeah, about the other. I mean, they released the um, was it the uh, one and two HD versions on the Wii U, but that didn't really go anywhere. But yeah. other than that, it's just yeah, PlayStation only. And then suddenly it's like, you know what? We're gonna re- we're gonna release Yakuza like a Dragon on Xbox and PC. It's like oh wow, that's big. And then suddenly it's like actually we're gonna release the whole collection on Xbox now. It's like whoa, holy crap! But this is. This is Sony. This is actually Sony themselves making this game, making this franchise, and going, you know what we should do? We should put this on our competitor system. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, that's that's just massive to me. Um, yeah, and, and I know what you're talking about, like, um, with... Um, oh, sorry, I just noticed this Red Jaguars thing pop up then, which I may as well just bring up, because I was sort of on that conversation. Um, so... So Red Jaguar says, it's entirely possible that Sony financed part of Yakuza to keep exclusive for a limited amount of time. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if that is what's happened, that that could be true. But from what I understand about the franchise, that that Sega would just... Sega's just always had this good relationship with Sony. Um, so there's uh, quite and a few Xbox games... Xbox may as well not exist in Japan. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You, so my understanding is Yakuza games were predominantly designed for the Japanese market, and yeah, they just didn't bother to make it for Xbox. And then it's like, oh, we could port it across to the Western um, places, but yeah, let's just keep it PlayStation. Basically, that's my understanding from what I've with discussions with people. But um, that there could be there could be something in that which we don't know about. Um, but yeah, um, going I guess going on to the the topic of um, these sort of services um, with. Um, like so game pass is almost like the netflix of the video games industry how, how do we feel about this do we actually feel like it is the future gaming and is it a good idea if it is uh i think that's the that's the key question because as you sort of mentioned martin it seems like it's going to go this way but is this, is this a good idea so uh, I, I think i th- oh I'll, I'll, i guess i can you. just yeah. start it off yeah yeah um i think that there are a couple things that we have to take into consideration before this is this is actually a good idea. Um, w- in order to stream anything, you know, even games, I feel like more so than than a movie, uh, you need a good internet connection. And there are many parts of the country, and then in, 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 even many parts of the the, uh, the United States, you know, rural areas, but even the world specifically, you know, not everyone has a broadband connection. Uh, and if they do have a broadband connection, it's not necessarily the fastest. And, you know, if if the only way that you can get, you know, your games is through a streaming service, you're going to have a bad time. Like you, you might not even be able to play it. It would be laggy. I remember I had like, uh, I tried PlayStation now and I I didn't have the fastest internet speed and like the, the controls were slightly delayed when I was playing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was a really shitty time. So, you know, in terms of that, I think... Which game did you say? I I was playing through PlayStation Now. I think it was Virtual Fighter. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you said the game or not. Oh, no. No, I wasn't. I was just saying... (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, when when everything's like, oh, you know, you got to have, you know, your your frame rates and whatever, and everything's measured based on how quick you punch and all that and and distance and whatnot for for, for purists and... and, yeah, all of it. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the main thing. First, you have to solve that is is making sure everyone has access to high speed internet that can run these things. And I don't think we've reached that point yet for everybody. So if if you're looking for accessibility, what was that? Google Stadia. It works fine yeah. everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Google Stadia, Amazon Luna. Um, that's another one. Everyone's jumping on board. But I think that that that's the biggest thing you have to solve first. Uh, and and again, I think we're in a transition period right now. You know, mm. uh, like yeah. Brittany said, not not a girl, not yet a woman. Uh, <laughs> we're 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 not there, there yet, guys. 
<laughs> we're not there yet. I, mean, I, I don't it, think we're we're uh, we'll we re- we'll reach the point eventually. Um, but yeah. Well, just on that on that note. So I mean, there there is there is that there has been that conversation previously about the streaming services, but with Game Pass specifically, and I guess uh, Apple Arcade, those are serv- and and PS Now, but only for certain games. Those are we're looking more at like games that are like a catalog of games, a hundred games, whatever that you can download. Cause the game pass is predominantly, so I get that word out predominantly a download service. It's not a streaming service. Um, you have the X cloud, uh, edition essentially for the ultimate package, which we can stream games to your PC and to your Android devices and stuff. Um, but the game pass service is more of a download thing, which is a little bit different really. Um, it's cause what you're saying is totally true. Cloud cloud streaming in general is still not quite there. Um, I've used right. Game pa- I've used the X Cloud thing actually a few times on my phone, and I was impressed. It's a lot better than cl- cloud streaming used to be. But um, so yeah, I feel for- like uh, with, uh, uh, what was the Google? Jeez, uh, the second screen experience. I feel like that was the that was the baby steps towards what you're talking about now, Graham. Second screen experience. What are you talking about? Oh, sir. You don't remember that revolution in video games where you could use your tablet while you're playing a game. Someone could grab their tablet and play it with you and have that. And you could have the map of the game on the tablet while you're playing the game. (laughs) I think you did that with a phone. Use your tablet and your phone. It was dumb (laughs) as hell and it never worked for anything. What what was what system was that? I literally did this with Beyond Two Souls. Someone synced up their tablet to play with me just so I could get a trophy. Fuck that. <laughs> I don't even, is this on, was this on PlayStation or what was this on? Dude, dude, it was on Xbox too. And not Beyond I, Two Souls, but I mean, this experience, you would have that second mean? screen experience thing. That was... Um, oh, I do not right? remember Maybe this. Maybe we through like three years of video games. Let me find it real quick. <laughs> I feel like they did that with Phantom Pain. I don't know. I, I, like, well, they had, they, had, they had this thing where, where you can download the app and I think you were able to... Uh, manage your uh your base your your uh your base in phantom pain from your phone wow which was interesting but hmm. yeah i mean i guess that's that's how you do uh multi-channel everything you know is connected smart gaming smart glass. microsoft oh smart glass X3 yeah feature xbox smart glass this is from uh june 4th of 2012 i do remember that i never used it <laughs> But it's oh, not yeah, oh yeah. wait, that's a lie. I tell a lie. I used it once or twice on my Xbox 360 to control the DVD, basically, because well, I could bring up go. my you screen to that control, that press play and pause on my DVD and stuff. I was like, Perfect. yeah, <laughs> skip scene. Well, I'm trying to work out Perfect. the freaking controller controls for a DVD. <laughs> like, okay, A is pause and start. How the hell do I skip schemes? What's going on? Oh my god, ah. uh, that, <laughs> that was that, for a brief moment. It was cool how Sony did that because you could literally use a PlayStation Vita as another controller. And I was like, that's kind of cool. You saved yourself 60 bucks of getting a controller, but good luck using the back touch panel for L2 mm. and R2. That was bad. Yeah, that's nice. Um, Sorry, I threw yeah. off the whole conversation. I was going <laughs> to say, uh, say that the only thing comparable that Sony's had to Game Pass has been PS Plus, which was amazing in the beginning because they tried to make people get it by giving you essentially five games every month because there was a PS3 game, a Vita game, and a PS4 game or crossplay somewhere in, in there as well. Now it sucks. PS Plus gets some heavy hitters on there, but now kind of overall it's not that great. Right, But that yeah. you can download the full game and you get it for free. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I still think, you know, PlayStation Plus, you know, how much is it now? Was it like $70 uh, a year? Still 60 bucks a year, I believe. It 60 might be bucks a year. I remember. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm not a, like, I'm not opposed, you know, to, to the price or, or the features. I mean, they had Final Fantasy 7, you know, as a it, yeah, as a perk oh, yeah. for March, you know, right. but but the, the only the only shitty thing was, I mean, I, I understand it, I guess, in a sense where they were like, all right, if you get on PS PlayStation uh, Plus for your PS4, you can't get it, the the P- PS5 version for free, you know, because, you know, you get the PS5 version, you get an upgrade. And I think there's an additional content with Yuki or Yuffie. I forgot what her name was, but uh, yeah, I, I, I could see, you know that being okay but yeah i still think playstation plus is is good uh for your value but i think there, there's gotta there might be a point where 
you might have to, uh, I don't know, make it cheaper for people. I, I, like, what is it? The Switch is, I think, 30 bucks or something like that. And then also they have a... F is there a family plan for PlayStation Plus? Because I know for, for the Switch or Nintendo, they have a family version where you can just divide it by nine and then everyone pays like three bucks. Okay. <laughs> for the uh, year. Yeah. I mean, but, but Nintendo is it. Bad. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That, it's, yeah, yeah, the switch, the switch online is not comparable to Xbox or PlayStation. Speaking of like, <laughs> speaking of like tablet play and like you know mobile play, like the only way you can talk to them, like you have that Switch app, right, where you had to talk to them through there oh, instead of yeah, having like yeah. a headset or whatever. Like you had to use your phone to talk with people. I'm like not, now you got your phone here, you got your you know freaking Joy Cons over here. It, it it's a it's a mess, but yeah, yeah. It, well, that that's Nintendo and their archaic ways. They're never gonna get beyond. They're still learning that the internet exists. But <laughs> and, and, that's true. I mean, proof to that though. While all this is going on, Nintendo just took Mario off their fucking digital yeah. thing and physically. So whatever. God damn, Mario's yeah. dead. Everybody, don't forget. <laughs> Officially <laughs> dead. Was that IGN who created that headline initially that Mario's dying? It was just on, on thirty first. Uh, Twitter trending the phrase Mario is dead and then CNN did a post saying like um, fires are being put out essentially because fans legitimately are worried that the Mario <laughs> franchise is done. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo's cash cow. They're like, fuck it. What if we just stop making Mario games? Like they're Let's just, Let's just smoking a blunt up. in the yeah in the boardroom. Like what if we just stop making Mario games? You know, yeah. That'd be smart. It's, but, but you've actually got a very good point because um, this has been also a to topic of discussion more recently is if these digital platforms are the way f forward, like streaming or downloading them, you know, we're at the, we're at the mercy of uh, Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo of what games we have access to. Um, right. So like with Game Pass, yes, you have 100 games. It's a limited amount of games. It's 100 then, which is a lot for your money. But you can choose to you can play them and you can choose to download them for a cheaper price. You can keep them keep them permanently and stuff, um, or you can go to a digital store and just buy them separately. But you also have to buy them physically as well. If this all goes that way to the digital store or just to Game Pass style things, every month we just have a limited number, and maybe they'll start taking them off the service. Like you won't be able to download them at all anymore. Um, like 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 Nintendo's done with Mario. Which or a streaming service as well. If, if everything goes just goes streaming, then we then there's no even no way to actually download the stuff. So we would be at the mercy of the manufacturers, basically the publishers and stuff. Which I, I personally I'm not super happy with. But do you think that's a way we could go? Do you think that would be likely to happen at all at any point? Um, I mean, I, I think it was a, the recent story we were talking about how uh the PlayStation stores for PS3 and the Vita mm -hmm. are closing. Yeah. Um I don't I don't know if we heard what were the specifics. I mean I I I'm, I don't know if I looked into the specifics of of like if you own games through those stores do you still keep them? Can uh, someone yeah. in the chat tell me? Does anyone know? Uh, uh, I believe you can still download them after they will not be purchasable. On got the store. it. Um, got it. But I mean, so so if 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 that if that uh, option is there, I guess that's not terrible. Uh, you know, I, but, I think Pete. Yeah, go ahead. But but that would mean you would have to be able to have bought the game beforehand, basically. So you would have had right. to like had them because for for example, like when I was like, I'm lucky enough that I've got a job where I can actually afford to buy games if I want to each month. I can't buy all the games I want to, but I can afford to. Buy there's some jobs I've been at previously where I went for like two or three years where I literally couldn't buy a new game at all. So if these right. games are only up for a few months or something, I wouldn't be able to get some of these games at all. And I'd never be able to get them again because it's cool that you could buy it, download it, and they remove it, but you could still re-download it because I, I bought that previously. Right. But yeah, you you could miss out completely. There could be whole generations of people who don't get to play the latest Resident Evil game, for example. That's true. Uh, I mean, unless they re-release it, you know, on their store, uh, you know, there are so many games like like right now. You like like I was talking about the transition. You're already seeing it with with the latest consoles. You have a, you have a physical version and a digital version, right? You don't mm. you don't have an optical drive. <clears throat> and laptops have been there for 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 years. Um, there, yeah, I think. I'm sorry. Now, I'll, no, I'll just say I'll just say there's an interesting predicament with that. Uh, like you were saying, Graham, uh, you know, the ability to purchase other games 
that existed on other stores and then they are no longer available there, right? And then if, let's say, the physical versions do exist and you want to play them, your current consoles don't have the ability to play your physical discs, right? Yeah, what, let, let's say in a world where we only get digital consoles right now because that's, that's where it's headed. Uh, I, think, I think that is an interesting predicament, you know? Mm. But, but then I guess that, that market for... Uh, you know, retrons and polymegas opens up, right? I think I think they try to fill that void with with their current, uh, you know, consoles and devices that they're releasing. So, uh, you know, I, I guess there's ways around it, you know. But if we're looking for like, you know, official, you know, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo consoles and, and, and that kind of stuff, I, I don't know. That, that might be hard, hmm. but. Maybe you, you now you're just gonna have to buy another console <laughs> <laughs> to to play your old games like a Polymeg or a Retron. And there's also the thing of like this could be a whole another conversation, but um, the game I'm home holding up here is called Cubed. It has a collection of games, and yes, everyone just feel your spine tingle because I left the pre-owned sticker on it. Um, <laughs> but on this collection, you have E4, Ever Extend, Extra Extreme. Uh, Luminez Live and Res HD. Ooh, Res nice. was not released in the U.S. for Dreamcast physically. Um, I think it was on PS2. I can't even remember now. My mm. point is though, like I would have not even known about this thing unless I worked at GameStop and saw this collection. I was like, oh, Res is on there. I don't own Res because there's not there wasn't like a legitimate way for me to own Res in America. So this collection's maybe still on xbla or something but like i wouldn't have found this searching like just randomly skimming through the digital storefronts and stuff mm-hmm. and when the digital storefronts are gone i would have not found anything so like i wander into a store and find it something physically there but that's then the only way to get it and now game stops are going to be gone everything's good like things are literally just going to disappear because we will not have a way to access them mm-hmm. yeah so good job yeah. sony fucking over you <laughs> shot yourself in every foot you can oh man uh Roger, you were saying i believe sony is already planning on a pc transition i don't think their long-term future is in proprietary consoles i think i oh. think you're right in that yeah. sense i mean anytime they sell hardware i believe they lose money every time you mm-hmm. uh sell your hardware you know what i mean so if your goal is to make a profit, I guess maybe they would be more in the line of, uh, you know, their current plan. They bought, uh, did they buy Evo, right? They bought Evo. Right. So they're, 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 they're planting their foot in, in, uh, the esports industry. Uh, and then they have other ways of doing it with their own, you know, unique IPs, uh, buying out game developers, having them create content exclusively for their brand. Right. And then all the money goes under their umbrella. Um, and um, what sorry. yeah go ahead you pause, you pause too long <laughs> i know i i do these long pauses i'm sorry go ahead um i wonder if this is the well oh actually to tack on to that losing money on hardware um you see sales on consoles and everything you never see sales on controllers because that's how they make money off of hardware is the controllers it's right. it's never the consoles like that's why you're going to see 70 80 fucking 80 dollar joy cons and stuff forever um it's because true. Nintendo sells outdated tech, so they that's why they can price their consoles so mm-hmm. low. But yeah, look at the Joy-Cons. It's almost half the cost of your freaking system you're buying. Um, so that's, that's but that's kind of, if anybody didn't know that, that's legitimately why you never see, you or very rarely see controller prices drop, is that's where companies make their money on hardware. Yeah. Um, and then going all the way back to MLB and downloading stuff and getting a game, but not complete. Happy dude did have a good point in the chat here. He said, uh, I would gladly pay $5 more for a month to get DLC with those games that are coming out on game pass rather than buying the DLC separately. Um, rocket league is an amazing example of this for myself personally, because I loved it. I liked the prequel supersonic acrobatic rocket power battle cars. That's Two weeks in a row, I've said that name now on this podcast. We're going to keep it going. <laughs> Moles um, done nicely. Yeah, yeah. this sure does. Um, <laughs> but when Rocket League came out, it debuted on PS Plus for free. And I grabbed that immediately, had a blast with it. That's one of the few games that I've played consistently since its release. 
Um, and but because I got it free, I was happily like, oh, I'll buy the Batman and Superman add on. Oh, I'll buy that Ghostbusters Ecto one add on for like one ninety nine or ninety nine cents or whatever. And eventually it got a physical release. And I was like, yes, I need to buy Rocket League physically. I'm still. Oh, is Scotty frozen for you? Yeah. Ah, no, Scotty. Ah, You're back. Yeah. You got to (laughs) the point where you said, yes, I need to buy this game physically. Jerking off two ghosts. You didn't, uh, every day, you didn't miss that much then. Um, (laughs) But so uh, I said, of course I need to buy Rocket League physically because someday it's not going to be on the PlayStation Network anymore for me to play. And I've been playing it consistently since it came out. But definitely at this point, I have put more money into add-ons and DLC for that game than it costs to buy the game. Did I freeze again? What happened? No, no, no you're still you're still I was laughing what you said. It's good. Oh no, I have, I've, you're a funny guy. For that game, than I have to buy the, the the cost of the game would be initially. But that's also because at the time of that, like, um, are they called Psionics? I forget the name of the company that has made one of my favorite games. That's great. Um, but like I, at the time they were a small company. So yeah, I'm going to throw them a few more bones because I didn't pay for the game initially. I feel like that's the hope of these services is that mm. like you'll buy these, but you're going to, you know, like you go, I don't know about you guys, but t- baseball tickets to get into the game are always super cheap. Or it's like bring in your local grocery store receipt and you get a, free extra ticket but then yeah you walk into the stadium you're gonna pay eight dollars for a beer and twelve dollars for a fucking oh, yeah. or even throw the <laughs> on. oh yeah yeah your grandma comes and in for free I but pay two hundred dollars for this jersey and fifty dollars for this large soda yeah, yeah uh, exactly. but, but that's but yeah again like like what you were mentioning about with with uh, gamestop and you know the dlc and all that i mean it rings true everywhere you know i worked at best buy and you have you have your core sales, so you have like you know your Apple product or your laptop or PC, but they make money uh, in their margin off the accessories that you sell them. So you know, get them a printer, get them a mouse, get them a controller or whatever. That, that's where that's where the money comes in, at least for brick and mortar stores, and and mm. and that you know that goes the same for baseball stadiums and movie theaters, right? They, they make more money off your twelve dollar popcorn. Uh, oh, than the yeah. movie ticket, uh, right. and yeah, you are right on that. <sighs> yeah, I got still worked up. I forgot what we were actually talking about. <laughs> uh, so I've got a que- I've got a question throughout there for you, based on kind of you know stuff that's happening with Microsoft and also with Sony with MLB and stuff. Um, do you could you see potentially a future where maybe this this could be where we're leaning more towards? where Sony and Microsoft are actually starting to team up their share. They're basically going to have both their games on one system, but it's going to use sort of, so it's got Sony studio backing powerhouse exclusive games and titles. Um, and, but Microsoft sort of infrastructure as it were, like the, the online services and stuff like that. Do you think that's a possibility that could, we're looking at that down that road? Because the reason why I ask that is because we've actually spoken in the past of how it's, the the generations these days it's so few and far between on the games and stuff and the, the quality of games on the different systems between microsoft and sony you right, be- yeah. you basically it comes down to do you like halo or do you like god of war that sort of thing that's what it boils down to these days it's like one or two games are exclusive most third-party games are on both systems and they play identically pretty much um, it's also a brand thing. You grew up with one, so maybe you just prefer it just because. Yeah. Uh, yep. To answer or- your question, I hope not. Um, mm, okay. You know, in terms of, in general, monopolizing an industry and then cannibalizing every single thing, you know, and then just being this one entity, hey, Amazon, hello, you know, <laughs> like, like they they do everything right groceries they they ship your packages they have a streaming service uh they own twitch thank you amazon overlords um i don't like the concept of it being cannibalized and then all under one umbrella because i think that that is way too much power uh and influence for one uh organization or company if if that's if that's what you're trying to infer um guess it kind of is um uh, but 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 like we still have like nintendo for example like with the switch like a very because basically with these these very powerful big consoles that play almost almost pc quality games basically or effectively pc quality games but on your tv 
Then you get the, the hardcore PC gamers who can, you know, set their rigs up for like three thousand pounds or dollars, or whatever. And then you got like the the Switch players who want to play games handheld but running around and stuff. And then you get like mobile gamers like you know Apple Arcade and stuff like that. Um, so there are still these. You still got the, all these options out there. But f- right now for PlayStation Sony, it's so it's so similar. Like, um, I mean, I, it's it's yeah. There's not much in the server. They've got very similar services. You got like you know. PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus, and you've got Game Pass and you know, uh, Xbox Live Gold, so which are basically very similar services, like free games each month or right. um, a service that you pay for monthly and you get 100 plus games and they rotate those games occasionally and stuff. Um, so they're copying each other effectively um, in everything they do and the games are getting almost identical. Uh, so it seems, it seems like it could go that way to me. Um, but I can understand what you mean. You don't want to have one company monopolizing everything. But uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that's what I'm aiming at. Just these two companies merging a bit more. Um, I just. I just sort of noticed what Red Jaguar said as well. That we're kind of already there. Basically, with Graham, we're technically already there. Sony has ported Horizon Zero Dawn to Microsoft platform, which is Windows, and that's very true. It's available on Steam. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and also uh, Days Gone is coming to Steam too as well. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, so we, we, it looks like we're kind of moving that way that these studios are trying to get their games out on more and more platforms basically um i think we're forgetting about something Ooh. uh there was a famous well famous whatever there was a popular tweet where nintendo tweeted hey xbox since we can play together in minecraft now do you want to build something and xbox replied our bodies are ready what are we building <laughs> so that was a big deal that yeah. Minecraft is owned by Microsoft and all on the Switch and has like Mario stuff in it now too. Um, Our Bodies is Ready is something that Reggie fils said when he was working for Nintendo. So Microsoft said that as a reference back to them. Um, but that's the thing is, well, to answer your question first, Graham, no, I don't want the companies to combine forces okay. because zero competition mean, means zero creativity. I agree with that. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it'll be the rise of more indie studios. But then the other thing is like, you know, a big or company like that, a big conglomerate controls the pricing. And then what, you know, they can say, you know what, this is going to be, I don't know, $800. You're going to have to pay $100 for this specific thing. Yeah. yeah and I was, and I was going to say that like, but the thing between Microsoft and Nintendo, they don't need to worry about each other. That's hmm. not like... That's like Olive Garden being worried about McDonald's. It's not gonna. Yeah. They're not competing with each other. Like yeah. So so like they can have a fun thing where it's like, oh, you got Mario in your Minecraft. Cool. We'll be over here with our giant servers that our PC gamers can actually play. Unlike on your <laughs> Switch, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, and and Microsoft is that. Yeah, Mike, that's a fair point because Microsoft has actually put some other games onto um, Switch as well, like the Ori. Or we franchise some other Microsoft Game Studios games. So yeah, they they don't see each other as competitors. It seems at all. Um, I will make one comment actually on the whole thing about um, some of these Sony games and stuff coming to Windows. Yes, Windows is a Microsoft operating system, but it's a little bit different than them coming to Xbox because Microsoft will get money from every Xbox game sale. They won't get money from like Steam sales. They, yes, they own the operate. Oh, yeah. They they create the operating system. They are not seeing any money from those Steam games being sold, though. Um, if it comes to the Xbox app on PC, then they'd make that money. So yeah, I th- I feel like Microsoft not really benefiting from some of those Steam games coming to it. Even though you could argue these Sony games are coming to a Microsoft platform on on PC. Um, it's a strange thing hmm. uh, because something else I think of is like if the cards are played right, it can help everybody out. Um, And it's the, maybe the weirdest example, but that blockbuster documentary, um, (laughs) it came out recently. Uh, I got the physical copy of it. Like I knew about it beforehand and everything. And I was pretty excited for it. And I watched it and then it debuted on Netflix Uh, for the, uh, for people that don't know, there's one more blockbuster in the world. It's in Bend, Oregon in the United States. And it's it's very much pretty much a family run thing now, even though it is owned by the Blockbuster company. Um, but after that documentary went on Netflix, it blew up. And like the the merch that they have at that store, like the T-shirts, the the knitted caps and different things like they cannot keep stuff in stock because everybody is asking for it now as a result of the popularity wow. of 
the blockbuster documentary going to Netflix. <laughs> uh, oh my God. And then blockbuster had the opportunity to buy them out in the early two thousands, which is right, pure yeah. irony. So, yep. That's a big part of that documentary too. And it's, um, it, it's pretty crazy. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is like, now that blockbuster is flourishing and like they're doing very well for themselves because it's on Netflix, which is clearly the direct competitor. And so like maybe the right thing in the right place can actually help. Um, you know, it's it, it, uh, the console exclusivity exclusivity only hinders the buyer because I, uh, personal experience. I literally bought an Xbox one to play halo five and I was done with halo five oh, wow. after, at the end of that. And I've, I've, we've had this conversation before, mm. but like, couldn't find anything else traded my Xbox one right back in like, and that I lost money overall from that whole deal. But it's, it's like, I'm not, I'm more careful now. I don't buy thing. I don't buy a full console just for one game to play on it, but because I can't financially either, but you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I think I'm just rambling at this point, but, but that, that does make sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah. Uh, um, do we want to chat to check out any other, to address anything in the chat at the moment? Uh, so it's no, I don't what um, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you guys have any other last questions for us or whatever, sound off in the chat now. Um, I think this is all like, if you're concerned with the way things are going, speak with your wallet. Cause that's the only way anything can change is if people stop mm-hmm. buying certain things or stop bu- pay, uh, backing certain services, then they'll realize, oh, this isn't working. I'm astounded that PS Now is still a functioning product because it was so bad at first. Or wasn't there, um, oh, wasn't there another thing that just recently left on Sony's store? But that's also kind of Sony's thing is they'll be like, look at this new shiny thing we got. We got it. and We got stuff on it that you can only get on here. And then like two years later, oh, what is that thing? Oh, we don't care about that. We got this other thing over here you guys should look at. PlayStation you know. TV is dead, right? Or is that still a thing? That it? That might have been it. That might have been it. Well, yeah. I, never, I never even experienced that ever. Uh, I'm not even sure if it came out over here in the UK, to be honest, PlayStation TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Hmm. I think it was something where you couldn't get Twitch on an Xbox at one point, too, because they had Mixer. Yeah, there was a thing with that at one point. But then... Before before Mixer left, they you could start doing Twitch stuff, and then yeah, then then basically, um, I think at one point you can get the YouTube app on on Xbox or something as yeah. well. I mean, but that's when it sucks for the consumer. Is like you couldn't, I couldn't adequately stream from my Xbox because at the time I didn't have a gaming PC, mm. so I had to like go through these roundabout ways just to. Whereas on the PS4, and I'm, this isn't me saying that the PS4 is better than the Xbox One, but like on the PS4, you can you literally hold down the share button and you can stream your gameplay because they had no problem with you going through Twitch and stuff. Yeah, like you had to like snap programs and other bullshit on Xbox because I think this was when something was on it that wasn't Twitch, but it let me stream through there, and it wasn't Mixer either, and somehow I rigged it so that I could, but it was like so bad just because Microsoft didn't want Twitch on their machine. So it's just this weird, dumb thing. Yeah, yeah. And now that, that's it's a lot easier because I've got a friend who doesn't know how to stream on PC or anything. But the other day he said, I'm, I'm streaming tonight. I'm like, really? Yeah. He's, he's just doing on Xbox. He said, and he doesn't know technology at all. He's worse than me at technology, but he was doing it. And I was like, wow, dude, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bad with technology, Graham. It's just the technology is bad with you. Yes, I guess yeah. that's, that's probably the best way. I, I get what's meant to happen, but most of the time it just doesn't work. It's like, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> as we experienced the start of this show uh, behind the scenes wow. there. Um, it's just a weird thing. I mean, the future's coming. It's here. We're doing shit that, and it's, it's going the way that it is. I got a back limited run games. I don't know, or strictly limited games or something like keep buying that physical uh, stuff. Cause otherwise it's going to be gone. But yeah, uh, yeah so I, 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 we're kind of going on a tangent now, but I, not a huge fan of those limited run game type things like occasionally stuff will pop up i'm like oh i do want to get that but i'm not i, I hate it when this the stuff's like oh you can there's only like 500 copies of these here you go they're gonna be really expensive and they come with all this extra stuff it's like i just want to have this game i don't want to have all the extra shit with it basically i there's like sometimes with limited run games they like release a game and it's just got like you know it's got statues and stuff like this i'm like yeah i just want the game but you're only going to like it's in the name, baby. Limited. I, I, I yes. know, but some of these are games that you're like, oh, this would be so good if I could just buy it. Um, why? Like, is there um, a way you could just publish the game and keep it, keep it there, please? Even if it's like, keep, 
have the special edition with all the statues and stuff limited but the, the game itself some of them i think had oh. like maybe just like a coin or something like night trap but i don't know yeah i'm honestly a little bit confused on what you're referring to because everything oh, that has it? a or limited edition you can get uh, through limited run anyway there is a base version of it um, is that yeah. oh maybe i missed that then because there was something more quite <laughs> i know not every game comes with all this it's crazy stuff. Ooh, it's because our new something- was focused on like the big collectors editions, and I guess maybe, maybe there was something quite know. recently because yeah, well, you guys, you guys all said to me you should get this, and I looked at it, it was like it's like three hundred dollars. I was like, no, I'm not going to pay that. I can't remember what it was. I don't know what that was. Uh, I so uh, I'll give an example of how I had to talk myself out of a limited one. A limited one release <laughs> that just happened. They put out Doom one, two, and three on a collection for PS4 and Switch, and the collectors editions come with a key card. The Switch one is red, the PS4 one is blue, and then it's got like a steel book, comic book, um, posters of all the covers, Doom 1, 2, and 3 all on one thing. And then I like, and oh, TJ told me about it because he's a jerk, and um, he's like, spend your money. I'm like, I can't do this because I own Doom on every console, and I really like Doom. And then, so I, I stood up and walked away from my computer because I was working at home when that went up yesterday. Yeah, Friday, whenever. This might be a tangent. It's getting to a good place. Don't worry. I turned up, look around. I walk over to my shelf, and I'm like, oh, hey, I forgot that I own this. What's this little gem right here? And I go over to my PS3 games, and I pick up Doom 3 BFG Edition. This has Doom 1 and 2 on it. So I was literally about to buy the exact same thing for PS4 instead of PS3. It's just a knee-jerk reaction because it's a cool collector's edition. Collection, like I legitimately, it comes with the original comic. I like the steelbook case. I really like that little key card. Um, You're gonna run out of shelf space and and room space as it comes in a big old PC style big box thing. Um, But I'm legitimately, I think. But oh, sorry. The point I was getting to. The regular, just like, just the games, it's 40 bucks. The collector's edition is 80 and then there's a bigger one with a shadow box that actually plays the Doom theme song, uh, like that, bam, 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 oh, wow. bam, bam, which is really cool and ridiculous. I might still get the Switch version, because I kind of would like to have Doom handheld. Mm, okay, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, however you want to justify it. <laughs> Can't you just do. download it? I thought Doom was available on Switch just to download. Is it not? Doom 64 is out, and I think Doom 1 and 2 is as well. Um, but uh, another thing, though, uh, uh, where'd it go? It's gone from my head now. <laughs> oh, Graham, you were saying, like, only 500 copies or whatever. Um, the Limited Run has started doing the four-week run of things. So, like, that Doom okay. thing, you have... It's not just... It, what not just 10 a.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Eastern was the times you could buy it. It's available now, like through the next couple of weeks. Um, okay. That did not happen with Turok, uh, I remember, mm-hmm. which I was a little bummed about, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I'm not sure if you were maybe thinking, because there are companies like Strictly Limited, I think only does collector's editions. There's other places that only do collector's editions, and no like base model. So I do understand that struggle, but I don't think Limited Run has done that specifically. Mm, um, I can't remember which one. I can't remember the game now and stuff. So, um, a lot of the, yeah, happy dude. A lot of them are print to order now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think my opinion on like collectors editions and things like that is, if I had a house and then I had a, a specific room or a den where I can put all of it, and then I have my way of decorating it, and then putting cool lights in it. You know, my TV's there and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I turn it into like like a museum or something. If I had the space, I would do it. But mm. like right now, I live in an apartment where <laughs> it's not exactly feasible. Like it would just end up looking like a U-Haul storage. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so but but I think we plan on moving out and, and then getting a house. So maybe I'll, I'll make sure there's an extra room where I can just, you know, create a nerd gaming, you know, den thing like i don't i don't want to be like chris with his you know uh, under the staircase you know collectors <laughs> that's not even there now. Floorboard. Uh, yeah you uh, know I, I i want a special place i want to make it look nice and right mm-hmm. now i just have like a shelf you know with with a couple of toys and whatever and an autograph of carrie fisher and that's about it nice all right it's all the mad reads <laughs> yeah <laughs> i my my legitimate like dream house idea is because i have like Previously in a house my my dad lived in, the basement was the size of the house, or you know what I mean, like the mm-hmm. um, 
the radius is that the word i'm thinking of uh what, I, the, the, the floor the, the basement was the yeah. entire size of like the whole property yeah. you know it was a basement like i kind of want that so that we can have the jam perimeter, perimeter. Maybe yeah perimeter like, is the word you got the place for the jams for the music instruments and then you have the gaming stuff on the other side and mm -hmm. then that's just away from everything mm -hmm. else that doesn't get them the way of the office because this is the office slash game room and that's kind of horrible <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Cool. Especially you know. like if I was doing like I don't know a Zoom call at my like legal aid organization. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like I I I I think they would be cool with it, but I don't know. I'd like like a like an office space, and then nothing, like just I, I, please be your boss person. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Hatsune <laughs> Miku's in the back. Like uh, yeah, I got like big titted anime girl, you know, stuff in the background <laughs> while I'm talking about like you know how to um, uh, figure out the housing crisis in Chicago. You know what I mean? Like 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 there's like two different vibes going at the same time. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So so yeah, I I would definitely just want like you know office space and then just a big nerd den, maybe the basement or something. I was helping my brother out with his, and he's his is still like. His posters are on the floor, you know, like he's still got board games stacked in a corner. I'm like, you got to you, you've been here for like a year. You got to you got to clean it up, buddy. Right. But but yeah, now we're going off on a tangent. I think there yeah, was one yeah. question. Mm. Uh, how do you guys feel? Did we get that one? How do you guys feel about the state of AAA and modern game gaming in general? Gameplay mechanics, content versus polish, quality versus quantity from hell was here. I can circle this back to our main topic because things are going to be released on Game Pass day one and not be a finished game. They already do that, you know. Um, what's yeah. funny is we mm. arguably get the better version of Kickstarter-based games on Dreamcast because uh, Izzy the Intrepid is a fine example of that. It's been out for on Steam for a little bit, but it's not done. <laughs> it's not fully patched. Once it is fully patched and repaired and ready to go, then the Dreamcast version is coming yeah. out. <laughs> In, yeah. Intrepid Izzy, by the way, not Izzy the Intrepid. Izzy the Intrepid, back <laughs> at it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think that question is interesting, and I feel like it, it might be stemming from, you know, the cyberpunk fiasco mm. and, you know, those kind of games where, you know, CD Projekt Red made great Witcher games, right? And then... I mean, Witcher 3, I think, was initially buggy, and I feel like people jumped on it after it had, like, the collector's edition or, or what, whatever, what have you, after yeah. it was fully polished. But I think that that is an ongoing problem because, again, it's, it's like you're this big, big corporation, big, big developer, Ubisoft, you know, CD Projekt Red, whatever, and, and you have people who are in your uh, you know, board of directors, and then you have deadlines, and you have mm -hmm. your investors, and they expect your game to come out on a specific deadline, unfortunately. And your game developers want to polish it and take as much time as they can, but unfortunately, with our current system, that is not feasible for these companies. So then they end up rushing things out, putting day one patches, and updates and then they just keep updating the game afterwards and yeah i mean i guess that's just that's just a facet of our current you know situation so i i, I i'm not a fan of it you know like what like i think the cyberpunk thing was unforgivable like i th like to reach that level of unplayability was just laughable hmm. but i do think i mean i do think it could be better obviously it could always be better so that's my answer to that yeah, I'm. I think here's the thing. I think on the whole, most games that actually come out these days are completely fine. They're completely solid. Right. They might have to be patched a little bit, but generally they are super playable. But it seems to be some of the really, really big titles uh, that are very complicated, like The Elder Scrolls, like Witcher, like uh, Cyberpunk. Um, Assassin's Creed uh, had that thing with Unity where it's just like they had screenshots of just like their eyeballs and, you know, yeah. jaw. And yeah, whatever. yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, what was it? Mass Effect's Andromeda as well had like lots yeah, of problems. Yeah, exactly. So some of these really big franchises, which the world is really excited about and they sell really well, that, that's those are the ones that, yeah, like the, the publishing studios are like, we've got to get this game out. We've set a deadline. You've got to do it. And then, but because they're so popular, they're so big, they're the ones that everyone sort of knows about and goes, wait, this game's shit. Like, why have you, why have you released this game when it's terrible sort of thing? Um, right. But like, cause I play I'm more and more, I've been playing games that are, that I think are AAA quality titles, but they're not 
you know they're not your assassin's creed they're not your, like your big 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 games but i'm like these games are solid like these are games, like um there's there's quite a few out there that i've been playing recently and i'm like wow um and like uh, immortals phoenix rising is is one um which i think is i got it not day one but i got it like a little bit after it released and i'm pretty sure it didn't have a, a patch or anything when i when i first installed it and it, it's brilliant great game top game like uh, Evil 2, the remake i don't that wasn't super flawed when it released you know yeah 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 i mean like, final, th- final thoughts for me on this is, mm. is when you're getting angry though at, at like let's say the game do not shit on the developers or the people who are working on it because they don't have a say in the matter of when the release date is you know they yeah. want to make their game perfect and it's you know the, your your CEO and then your your the top execs who are making these decisions. So your poor artist or you know graphic designer or, or light designer or whatever, they're not having a say in when the game comes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're getting pushed to their limits because by the they, man, yeah, by yeah, by the indeed. man, exactly. The, man. the the <laughs> the vague you know guy up at the top. But I mean, it, it's true though. Like mm. you know, crunch time is a thing that exists. And there but, aren't that many studios that that are uh, that are that are trying to veer off from that. Yet. Yeah, but hopefully, with the whole um, Cyberpunk uh, twenty seventy seven um, fiasco, I think some hopefully some publishers are going to take more notice because they had to like do lots of refunds and stuff for that game. And it's not I, even on the the, the, the digital <laughs> digital. Like uh, yeah, yeah, like, right you cannot yeah. buy it on the PS4, PS. Yeah, they they pulled it because yeah, basically unplayable, didn't they? So, you know, like that was the thing. Like, was your deadline worth it? Now you had like millions or billions of dollars of PR nightmare that you exactly. have to deal with. Like, like in the end, your deadline made you lose more money than what you were expecting. So, yeah. So I mean, the, but the people at the top aren't necessarily always the brightest. Just because right. you're in a high yeah. level of position, you're not necessarily no, smart. Really and idiots. I think we can all take that. <laughs> Yeah, from from experience, from different jobs and things in our past lives and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. So, I think I, sometimes I feel that literally the bosses at the top are like, okay, after you install it, does it get past the title screen? Yeah, ship it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> give me my money, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I think most of us, maybe in the chat, whatever. At this point, we're we're at a certain age where our friends or we know people that are making get ga- ga- making games in the game dev world. No one wants to make a bad product is what you have to remember. No one, no one morally wants to make a bad game and ship a bad game, but right. you know, got to meet that deadline. That's literally, I I'm pretty confident. That's why cyberpunk was out is they had to get it out before Christmas. And then oh yeah, Christmas ever, you yeah. know? Mm. Um, True. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. The state w- um, is, I think the state of it is people are learning, but the big, the big companies are not, and they're going to keep pushing out shitty stuff so long as we buy it. I hate to say this, don't pre-order stuff. That's not as much of a factor as it used to be, but just wait and like watch it. Do the demos. You know, Some things, un- unfortunately, are not testable before... Te- is that a word? Um, yeah, let's yeah. make it a word. Tested, <laughs> because you can't do an adequate stress test for like online multiplayer and things like that. Mm. So it's yeah, you know, pick and choose, I think. I'm yeah. sorry, I interrupted. Graham. Oh, no, I was just gonna say it's it's kind of almost ironic as well with the cyberpunk thing that this was the game that was gonna be like really help launch like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, because it's like it could run from what I've heard, it runs reasonably well on those. Um yet that's the one console people cut though well, two consoles people can't bloody buy at the moment. So it's yeah. uh it's kind of oh man. Um yeah. I think Andrew. So that's a really dude, good question. Uh, that's the thing, Happy Dude. Like, that is so... I mean, my girlfriend Rachel knows how much I like Keanu Reeves, and we dig, and we've been watching more of his movies, but we were watching um, E3 in li- in real time, and I was like, <laughs> she knew that one of the three games I was excited for in 2020, Doom Eternal, Last of Us 2, Cyberpunk. This was before the Keanu Reeves shit. And then that trailer happens with him. He's like, time to go, Samurai. And then he walks out there and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, it felt like I was there. Like I was starstruck, like the whole crowd. And even Rachel was like, wait, he's there. That's he was just in. He's there. I'm like, this is insane. And like, I was so much more excited for it and stuff. Mm. So God damn. He just said you're breathtaking. So I'm sorry that threw me for a loop. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and and what's also sad about that is like people are getting mad at like Keanu Reeves. Like, how could you? Yeah, do what this? the hell does he have to do with it? He walked in and did his job. <laughs> Like, yeah, he took his iron fist and said, "You must release it now." Like he probably didn't have like too much say in in the the uh, gameplay either. I don't know if they showed him too much. I mean, obviously he's in the game, but like you know, you're probably once you're in, you do your lines and all that CGI stuff, and then you get out. You're not like having a hand in the development, you know. So hmm. yeah, it was it was. I remember one of the comments of Giant Bomb when they were watching Alex Navarro said when Keanu Reeves came out, he's like. Video games. I've just been made aware of them. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> cool. Good question. I, yeah, very good question. Very good question. Um, I think. Yeah, you had another twenty minutes to our conversation. Yeah. Right um, I think that kind of does it for this the show this week. Um, yeah. Yeah, like uh, that was that was really fun though. I enjoyed that. I think I think the, this this stuff with like Microsoft and Sony and you know Cyberpunk's never going to get away. Um, those conversations are going to keep coming back. So um, always always yeah. happy to chat about this sort of stuff. I need an outlet to complain. You know. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, being part of our yeah. <laughs> Scotty, are we going to go and raid someone? Shall I let you get yeah. into the raiding um, stuff where we wrap up? up here. Uh, their name is I am Kyle X. Very cool person oh, They're playing. Yes remake of the first resident evil right now Perfect. so, so cool. hang out guys they're a lot of fun very positive upbeat scottish uh person yeah cool um so wh- while we do that um i'm actually going to very quickly address the feedback from mr haru um while we're sort of wrapping up the show um, oh sure i'm sorry he, yeah he said uh cause i was going to give you that time to look for someone and then i'll just, just chat while you're doing that oh, but you've done it already God. um so his feedback was graham's pickups of dc games somehow reminded myself that one of my goals in life is to obtain the UK and Japanese region variants of the classic Sonic games. Seeing the differences in box art and packaging is something I want to own from Sonic to 3D Blast. Um, so that sort of is a reference to last week's show. I actually got a stack of Dreamcast. I think it's nine Dreamcast games, which I got from someone on the Dreamcast, um, Dreamcast Junkyards uh, Facebook um, page, basically. Someone was selling a load of games and uh, I... I mistakenly thought a lot of them were going to be american versions but they actually turned out to be all japanese which i'm not not a problem with that because that's actually pretty cool and most of the games the games i've never played and some of them i've never even heard of before so it was pretty cool to look at but uh yeah um that's actually quite a good goal for a gamer i think like finding the different region of a franchise that you love getting the different region variants and stuff because there are a lot of differences um especially in the box i, art. I, I have uh it, it it depends on the game for me, but it's fun that I have the Japanese version of Sega Bass Fishing because mm. the Japanese version is just called Get Bass. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. um, that is fun though, and I've I've had I've had to fight Pixel Heart releasing those PAL versions of Dreamcast games. I think I might get the Jet Set Radio because I like that box art. It's different from the American. Yeah, and you the, can have one. And the game content's <laughs> different. I don't know if you know about this for Jet Set Radio and Jet Grind Radio. The games are slightly different in the way you unlock the characters the characters get unlocked in different okay. orders because i played the well, japanese version first then i played the uk versions like this is different then i played the american versions like this is different as well what's going on <laughs> but you, you unlock them the same way they're just different different sequences. orders it's a different order yeah but so like you've got the same characters overall but from from memory i remember like getting different characters earlier with the different versions i was like this is this is crazy um yeah. so yeah i was gonna um, go off another tangent and ask why are they differently named why is one jet set one's why is one jet grind but uh, wh- why why okay. why do you I mean, I've going, going back to the beginning why does america call football football or whatever <laughs> like why why and why they call and soccer uh, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> cool that's very true anyway I'm anyway you did it Cool. Well, um, let's let's wrap up the show, shall we? So, uh, uh, actually, Scotty, any announcements? Uh, Marcin, any announcements before we do anything? Uh, yeah, d- d- just, just you know, as as always, check out our website, megavisionsmag dot com. Follow us on all our social media outlets. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, maybe I'll make a TikTok. Who knows? Uh, we're on YouTube mm. as well. Don't forget, uh, tonight, uh, H2O Happy Dude is streaming on, at 7 p.m. Eastern right here uh, on the same bad channel. Sweet. Uh, and follow us on Twitch if you have not, if you're a first-time listener. Yeah. So that's Power a cool Stone. That's what he'll be playing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. 
Great game. I think it's the first attempt at Power Stone, so he's going to have a oh. clean slate going into that. Yeah, so that should be a good time. Yeah, I'd be yeah. interested uh, to hear how he, play, how he fares with that. Yeah. Yeah. And just awesome. on our schedule for Twitch, kind of to jump off of uh, Marson's platform there, it's uh, we got st- we got streams going on almost every single day. I'm not sure we're doing on Thursday Night Throwdown yet this coming week. Uh, last week, we played Daytona USA on the PS3 to kind of celebrate that since it'll be gone soon. That was a lot of fun. We have a goal to get a full room of eight people playing that somehow, sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think that is just about it. On Well, we've always got like go to the YouTube as well. Graham's thing of Xenocider. I unboxed mm-hmm. something. I can't, I've, I've lost my... We have Check us out. <laughs> Follow yeah, us on the internet. We do so much. We do a lot yeah. of things. Cool. Um, but right now, guys, uh, if you guys don't have anything else to say, I'm going to hit enter so that we raid I am Kyle X. What do you think? Go Sounds good. It. I'll put up the ending screen. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Happy Saturday. Saturday. And have a good one, everybody. Word. I got to turn on everything because I didn't do it. <laughs> so I don't know. Guys, give me a thumbs up if you can hear Rachel peeing. Oh, oh they both get <laughs> a thumbs up. No, <laughs> no way. I, I, I did it too Fantastic. soon. I did it too soon. I did it too soon. Uh, no, Marson say nope or I somebody made soon. it safely to home base. I'm not sure. I did- <laughs> uh, I have oh, my God. I got a message this. To contribute to any of I this. thumbs up as default and wasn't expecting the second half of that sentence (laughs) 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 honey i gotta tell you about this sandwich